All right, all right. Welcome to Raw Strength, the Battle of Asgard. I'm here in Portage, Michigan. Uh, guest Portage, Kalamazoo. We call it the same area down here in southeast Michigan for the uh, annual show here at uh, Raw Strength. Uh, actually, two a year now with Jeremy Mulcher. Um, we got another one coming up in August and in, a lot of stuff in between here in the state of Michigan. For many of you out there, I'm back. You know, Joe Janiga, Jim Light Podcast. What a great way to uh, start my comeback, too. Uh, it's been a long uh, seven or eight months. For those of you that's hung around and stuck with me, uh, get ready. We're going to have a lot of fun, and I couldn't think of a better way to kick off um, this comeback, I guess you can say, than with a great show here in southeast Michigan. However, I will say that uh, it's colder than hell out here right now. Colder than hell. It's uh, 40 degrees, maybe. It's like a winter day here in Michigan. Uh, sadly, uh, we're all waiting for summer, and it's not quite here yet. But this is an early season competition, and I think we have, I think, about 62 competitors, many uh, new faces, uh, some some guys that I remember from last year, and a lot of new uh, people that are coming into the sport. And this is a great competition to kick that off. So there's an obvious division. There's a huge uh, men's class. We got a women's class, even a master's class here today. Five events. I guess I got to remember what those events are. We have a keg medley to start. If you guys notice kind of the camera angle, the best we can do for this particular event, as you know, Strongman, unless you're ADL Live, is probably one of the more difficult sports to live stream. Uh, we are certainly not ADL Live, uh, but we're going to try to make the best of it here today. The keg run shouldn't be too bad. Uh, you guys will kind of catch it you know, with the crowd. Everybody will sit down in front of you. Then we'll be able to zoom in a lot of these static events. Uh, there's a log press. There's a axle deadlift. Uh, we have a, a, a natural stone to shoulder load, and I think we have a weight over bar. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Five events here today, and uh, I think we're going to get uh, all of them in uh, with a really good camera shot for you to see all these competitors and uh, get things rolling here. I think in just a couple minutes we'll get the keg run out of the way, which I'm sure everybody here is okay with that. It's probably going to warm them up a bit if we get a little bit of the sun to come out. Uh, so it's good to be back. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun out here today, so stay tuned. I'll be back with you in a few minutes when this first event starts. Uh, get ready for a fun day. Oh, one more thing real quick, guys. Anybody out there listening, uh, of course, it's on The Gym Life Podcast. Uh, it's under the live, the live, as many of you have already found out. But please get in and comment on the live stream itself. If there's any mic issues, you can't hear me. I uh, need me to turn it up, turn it down kind of thing. I uh, kind of monitor that throughout the show. It looks like a lot of these competitors, too, have names on the back of their shirts. Uh, note to all you other uh, promoters out there, that is super convenient when we're live streaming, that you all can see all these guys, and I'll get to know them with you along the way, and we'll be able to um, – comment and remark on some of the things that they're doing out here today so give me some feedback uh please shoot me some comments and uh, i'll also get some messages to these athletes for you family and friends that aren't able to uh, be here to uh, uh watch this event here with us today All right, off to the races here. Sorry about that, guys. Thought we had a little bit longer of a break, but had a couple things to say to their MC out here. Uh, yeah, I'm back, baby. George, I am back. I know you're thinking, where the fuck's this guy been? Well, I'm back. That's only one, George. It's one swear word. I promise only three today. You know, I got to work the rust off me a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I am, and I'm making a phone call to you as soon as I get out of here today because uh, I got some catching up to do. But all is good, and, yeah, thanks for everybody that's uh, wished me back even here at the show. And uh, we're off the keg run right now. 
again, it's a, it's a really tough camera angle. We're going to try to keep people down in the front uh, as these kegs are kind of moving back and forth. I think we can all agree it's not the most exciting of an event. So if you uh, get a chance maybe to only see bits and pieces of this one, uh, we'll make it up to you on the other static events because we're going to be able to get a much better camera angle uh, than we can in some of these events at Strongman, of course, present a little bit of a, a challenge. And this one is uh, certainly that. It's a short run, uh, trying to do things in a parking lot here at Raw Strength, by the way, in Kalamazoo. This is another example of one of those great power gyms uh, in the state of Michigan. I say power because there's a lot going on here between Highland Games and Strongman and powerlifting, obviously bodybuilding, some CrossFit, all that good stuff here. Uh, Jeremy's really put it together for this community. Uh, this gym represents all these strength athletes out here and really across Indiana, Ohio, uh, probably parts of uh, – Parts of Illinois as well. Jeremy really pulls these athletes in from everywhere around here. Uh, so we're going to see a, a good bunch of people maybe that uh, many of you haven't seen before. And, again, a lot of them that have competed throughout the state of Michigan, and we'll see them all summer long. I'm going to get the weights for all you guys uh, in respect to uh, what they're doing now and what we got coming up here too. As many of you know, these strongman competitions tend to last a little while, but I'm a seasoned vet. I'll be here through the whole thing. I think uh, Panda and I maybe broke a record last year at Great Lakes Strongest Man for the longest commentating session of 12 plus hours. So this six hours today is just, it's going to be nothing to me. It's just a little warm up. We'll take some breaks in between though. So uh, it, it, you are dealing with the novice women right now. Uh, the keg uh, is, uh, well, it's a, it looks like 50 pound pony kegs. You have 100, uh, then a 50 pound, and then when we get into the open uh, weight, uh, that's women's, it'll be 150, 150, uh, that being 100, and then 50 pounds. So there's three kegs. It's a three keg run throughout, uh, 150, 150, as we get up to the master's men, open men, open lightweight, middleweight, and super heavyweight, uh, the kegs will go up to 150, to 200, to 250. So a good little run. Quite a turnout here today. We got about 100 spectators so far to go along with about 62 competitors, I think. And I'll get that count for you guys later. A huge novice men's class. Five kegs. Is there five kegs? Okay. Okay. Well, I got three here on the list. So, okay, we got two more. Oh, I see. The ponies are 50. Okay. I get it now. If you've never run with a keg before, if you're not in Strongman, there's no reason for you to ever run with a keg. Uh, unless you steal one, of course. It's an awkward carry. It's going to set on your quads. You're not lifting that up. You're not full striding with this. The distance to running is fairly short. I like the pyramid load if you guys are catching that. Not the easiest thing to do in the world. Uh, it's a new concept with this, a keg loading in, in this keg medley. Uh, the bottom two in the middle, one on top kind of thing. I'm not sure how it's being scored. I'll get some more information on that for you. Um, have we seen a lot of guys complete that? Just a few. And what happens when you knock them over, do we know? Uh, you don't get any drop. When you drop, if it drops, so like just now, yeah. it drops, you don't. Okay, well, there you go. So if they drop down, score's over then at that point. Okay. All right, who we got here? Yeah, oh, Jeremy Mulcher is killing it, man. You got that right. Uh, you're leading the way. You know, you're representing. You got a lot of these promoters in the state of Michigan that are making this state a bigger sport uh, in the sport of strongman, and uh, obviously this is a perfect example. Of course, a lot of these guys were chomping at the bit to get out for their first competition this year, and being April, it's time to get to work. Uh, the snow has melted. It may not be much warmer out here, but at least the sun's shining, and a lot of these guys are ready to start the season. Yeah, the sun feels great, doesn't it? It's coming out now. All right, now it's time to get started. Working the rust off. Again, for those of you just joining, bear with the uh, live stream here on the kegs. Um, it's just kind of what we got to deal with sometimes, being a smaller production. We're not ADL Live. We don't have 17 bird dogs going. 
but uh, we'll certainly bring most of these guys to you uh, in better form on some of these static events here. Uh, like I said, kegs aren't that exciting anyhow. Just warming everybody up for the day. Ah, uh, you can see the pyramids. Two loaded pyramids. There you go. All right. All right, looks like we're on to the next class. Uh, it's our novice men's class. It's probably starting pretty quick here. So by the looks of it, he's got about 25 competitors for novice men. And George, I think every one of these guys, if they haven't already, is going to be signing up for the... They're ready to add that show to their resume, as everybody should. Uh, I used to say in the Midwest. Now I say everybody in the United States and obviously after last year uh, you win international so we're going to see even a bigger group this year for sure I've been keeping an eye on it. I've been keeping a little eye on everybody kind of sneaking around you on Instagram and social media I took a break for a while life break but I'm back I said that before too but no I'm really back this time but I've been spying on everybody collecting the content, getting ready for some big shows and going to have a lot of fun and uh, get back involved in a lot of these shows in the state of Michigan, in my own backyard, including Jeremy's show, more than likely George's, if he still is willing to have me around up there, I'll be back up there. And then, of course, Jeremy's back in August. I know Detroit Muscle's probably got another one on the books. I know, uh, what's the one, the, uh, the, the, the rumble in the thumb? What is that, the throwdown in the thumb this year? We know that's happening. Battle on the Beach, Nick O'Hare show, that's happening again this year for the third straight year which is an awesome competition, and I believe, actually, I got nothing planned that weekend, so there's no reason I can't be out there to spectate. Who knows? Maybe compete. You know me, guys. I'm always going to say I'm going to be making a comeback competing. Last time I tried that, it cost me a tricep. Although they do have a weight over bar here today for you Highland Games guys. I always tell you, cross over to Strongman. Strongman cross over to Highland Games. You guys know I'm big on that. Yeah, this is just like some like, <laughs> you guys, seriously, there's people standing up everywhere. It's like one person's moving kegs. Are they competing? I don't even know. What's going on? Oh, they're sweeping sand? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, anyhow, <laughs> maybe some good people watching for you guys out there right now. <laughs> it's mayhem around here. Everybody's standing everywhere. That's all right. Like I said, when we get on these logs and the axle and the stones, we're going to have a great vantage point for all you guys to enjoy the show. And, yeah, that's stuff we like more anyhow, right? Heavy pressing, heavy pulling. Yes, feats of raw strength, August 2nd. You guys are helping me out here. Throw down in the thumb, July 27th. Battle on the Beach, uh, July 13th. And then, uh, George, when's your show? Uh, Great Lakes, September 14th. Yep, there it is. Nice to see Michigan representing. Uh, that's the way it needs to be. There's a lot of great athletes in this state, as many of you know. And, boy, we are getting ready to showcase another big group of novices today. Uh, and there's somebody in that mix you know you're going to see on the national level and hopefully beyond. Just pure chaos during this uh, loading medley. You know, we're kind of set up here on a vantage point above everybody. It, it's not helping. I know, guys. It's not helping. Don't turn it off. It's not good enough. It's never good enough. Oh, it's doing enough. Okay. Yeah, he's got a great facility out here. For those of you spectating that are from this area or ever coming through, man, raw strength is where it's at. This gym just gets you excited. Makes you want to lift heavy, that's for sure. He's got everything you can think of in this gym. He's even got a car with a – it looks like he hasn't popped a hole in the roof yet, but something for a yoke carry down the road it looks like. Yeah. Plenty of tires, plenty of strongman equipment, lots of powerlifting stuff, Highland Games stuff. Great location here.
It's four steps to the other side. It's not that big of a course. Many of these big boys here are going to have no problems hoisting these kegs around. A lot of them drink a lot of beer themselves, more than likely handle a lot of ponies full, maybe some full kegs. What's a full keg weigh? 300 pounds? No, maybe not that. I bet you it does. It does not. 150. Well, I'm getting weak then. Liquid? Okay. We'll get that answer back to everybody. I'm sure one of you smart people know that too. One of you beer drinkers out there. No, Zerker yoke. No, who does that shit? Who does the Zerker yoke? <laughs> yeah, we don't ever want to see that again. I just got that comment, George. And here we go. Zerker yoke. Or Zercher. I pronounce it Zerker. Is the full keg 161? Okay, so if this keg had beer in it, guys, it's 161 pounds. So some of these kegs weigh more than a full keg of beer. 250, okay. Boy, it always feels heavier with liquid, though, don't it? Sloshing around. Like the slosh barrel. Great event last year if you guys missed it at Great Lakes. The slosh barrel was a part of that medley. Go back and watch that. One of those big 50-gallon drums with partial water fill. Makes it really hard to move things around. Got to get back into my, my commentating vibe here. Uh, I've already chalked up two swear words. I promise I won't get above four. I just have to remember to remind myself. This is a family-friendly show. They all are, except War of the North. Yeah, I miss George, but like I said, life things. I'm back, baby. War of the North, that's a 21 and over show for all of you out there that haven't been or seen it or participated. One of the coolest experiences in Strongman, the War of the North. So yeah, no problem with these kegs. Well, I can't wait till a bigger challenge for these guys takes place over the next few events. Just a grit. It's not fun carrying them. They're not moving that far with them. Yeah, the, 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 the six keg to the top for the shorter guys. Nice lift, there you go. Well, you make easy work of 150 pounds. It's always these lightweight guys that come with the most power, that explosive power. Yeah, the smashing the hand there, that could be an issue. Not even a challenge. He just picked that up with one hand. There's some strong guys out here today. This is pretty exciting. Talking to a few of them, getting ready for this competition. Everybody's coming in off for a long winter. Injuries are healed. No bumps or bruises. This first competition's always a lot of fun. Hopefully we don't see any tragedy today. I don't want to jinx it. Everybody had ample time to warm up, so I don't see anything like that happening. We should see some birdie big pulls on that wagon wheel deadlift. That's going to be exciting to see. That's a 14-inch deadlift for you guys out there who are training that pull on uh, this particular apparatus, which is a real wagon wheel, by the way. Uh, we'll see somewhere around 850 to 1,000 pounds by a couple of these guys, I'm sure. And I'm not sure what the order of that is out here today, but if we get it, why these guys are somewhat fresh and haven't got a tore up posterior chain, uh, we're going to see some big lifts with that for sure. It's like a 12-inch log press, and uh, yeah, the stones range, I think, from... 50 pounds to about 250 pounds on those natural stones. Pyramid completed. Nice work. Cole. I'm just going to say last names. Cole. Man with first name for a last name, but works. That's a good load. Jeremy did a great job with his shirts. Promoters, he put the names on the back of the shirt. George, I'm not even implying you should do that. Not with as many people as you get. That'd probably be more of a headache than you want to deal with. But it is kind of nice. We like names on the back of shirts. Yeah, it's warming up out here. It's about 38 degrees now. The water barrel is back. The slosh barrel, we call it. I, I'm looking at my comments here going through. Thank you guys for commenting, by the way. 
Yeah, the slosh barrel is back. That's water barrel fun for sure. That's going to be at the Great Lakes this year. I don't think anybody is doing that currently, but but George up in the Great Lakes. Talk about tough. Oh, my God. You guys got to go back and watch that video. That is not an easy event. We had some massive heavyweights at that show last year. They all struggled with that barrel, including the king himself. Well, sort of. He doesn't really struggle that much, does he? Jake Harmon, for those of you out there wondering who the king of the Great Lakes is, current reigning champion of everything. I don't know if there's a bounty on him this year, but I think George knew what he was doing. He could have made that bounty $5,000. It wasn't going to change a thing. That guy is built to win in the Great Lakes. There's a good solid run there. That's Brandon Moore from uh, Detroit Muscle. It's kind of where we know him from earlier as well, too. He's a lightweight guy that's got a lot of power. Recently came off a of knee surgery. Talking to a lot of these guys that were banged up a bit. They're healthy now. We're getting there. Explosive power, people. Explosive power. Static isn't everything anymore in Strongman. you got to be able to move. Getting good at a medley is part of that. Every show is going to require it at some point that you need to be fast and strong. Yeah, that first keg, that 250 keg is, there's another 250. There's three 250s on this run. Okay. Yep, that's right nearest to the camera there, guys. 250s. Thank God they only have to move them 25 feet. It's getting hard to enunciate my words right now. My lips are cold. Mm. No kissing. No kissing out here. That's a smart way to carry a keg short distance. When you got to load it like that, why not? Why not? It's not that heavy. Load, keep it up high. Change your, change your style. That makes sense. I think he might even have the fastest run because of it. Open men's middleweight, and that's uh, second lane. That's the furthest from you. Just to reiterate, weight 250, 200, 150. That's 321. Uh, that'll stay the same now throughout. So you're going to see the middleweight men, middle hev or the heavyweight men, and then the super heavyweight men. For those of you wondering what disparity there are in those weight classes, I think heavyweight men is uh, 265 up to 300, right? And then the, is it 275 up? And then their super heavyweight, of course, is unlimited past 308, I believe. And we got a handful of those big boys here as well. One I'm looking forward to watching is uh, Jared Bellows. I talked to him earlier, and... He's a guy that finally got his sleeping right. <laughs> I say that because a lot of these big guys can't breathe when they sleep. He's like, I got a CPAC. Life is good. So I'm sure he's going to have a great day out here today. We're above the crowd, our camera. We're mounted on top of a, a yoke car. I like it. Jeremy's innovative, just like, just like George up there. Innovative, always coming up with things, different things. Some things work, some things don't work, but things nonetheless. Easy work. These guys look strong today. Everybody's happy to be back. A lot going on in the strongman world. Yep, I've been spying. I've been seeing everything go on. Boy, the names are changing fast, aren't they, guys? Lots of new faces out there. Lots of new strong guys and gals doing big things and they're making all those experienced men and women work really hard at the top of those rankings. Arnold was fun to watch this year. Like what Nick Camby's doing. If you guys didn't know, he's qualified for World's Strongest Man coming out of the 105 class. That's fun to watch. Representing Italy. I know what you did there, Nick. That's a smart move. That guy knows how to market himself. And he's strong as, well, he's probably one of the strongest 105ers ever to walk the planet. Now in an open class with the big boys, and he's holding his own. PSL kicking butt out there, watching their stuff go on. Luke Davies across the pond with all the stuff chaos has got going on, more than last year. 
Guy's a promoting fool, gets the job done. Lots of big names in Europe, lots of people traveling from the States to Europe and Europe to the States now. We're seeing a lot of, a lot of mixing our athletes up, which I love. Everybody wants to see that because we want to know who the best in the world is. Although that is not the easiest thing to find out. Uh, certainly gets everybody talking, makes for uh, some good banter. Nice sunny spot here, this is working. Actually, this event's going by pretty quick. We're just about gonna wind it up here, I think. Yeah, yeah, real convenient setup. You know, Jeremy didn't overthink it. Everything's in a general area. Doesn't require much take up, much setup during the event, which as any good promoter knows, that's half of the battle. His, his volunteers are gonna appreciate that. Everything's in a cozy corner of the parking lot here. Definitely didn't overthink that. He kept it real tight, I love it. He's always got some real cool shirts too, by the way. Battle of Asgard. Last year it was the Valhalla, I think, uh, at Valhalla Meet Meadery. That's a mouthful to try to say it. I can't remember the whole name, but we got rained on last year. So this year, despite the cold, at least we're not getting rained on. Uh, so knock the keg down there. I don't know if the clock is. Yeah, they're going to. Got to build it. I see. So we're going to leave the one up there. And load the second one back up. Does that count? Yeah, okay, why not? Yeah, he's, he's got it balanced. It doesn't have to be a perfect pyramid. That is not a part of the criteria. It does not have to be a perfect pyramid. It does, yeah. It, it's a little harder to stack them. I mean, if you want, I guess stack them straight up and down if you wanted to. I don't think we have any seven foot nine people walking around doing strongman. Thor, maybe? Corey Loper, yeah, he could do it. He's pretty tall. Oh, right, right. Not fun in live streaming, Corey Loper. No, if you notice back, you always get from the neck down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Nick, Nick O'Hare, he's, he's on the live stream right now. Nick, just talking about Battle at the Beach. If you joined us late, can't wait for your third show. I'll be able to make it finally. No better place to be than Harbor Beach in the summertime on the beach, by the way. And Nick's always got some cool stuff he's doing there at Battle of the Beach as well. I haven't looked at the entry in a while. I, I imagine uh, these shows are filling up pretty quick for everybody. Uh, certainly with this group of novice guys we got here today, if that doesn't get you promoters excited about these up and coming competitors the sports growing it's always growing and if you're listening to this and you're and you're getting into the sport every one of these shows from this show to battle at the beach at the great lakes always offer a novice novice uh, category which uh, don't be frightened if you if you train weights you'll be just fine strongman is for everybody we'll find a weight class for you if you're a lighter guy, be athletic. Be athletic. There you go. See, a little hard to hoist that up. That 150, I'm done, he says. I'm done. Interesting concept. There you go. Pyramid built. I like it. I mean, I see those kegs getting heavier. I, I don't know how easy that would be for a lot of guys. But I, I like it. Nonetheless, I like it. Is that it? Are we done? No, we got a couple more left. Yeah, for those of you just joining in the live stream, uh, be patient. This camera angle stinks. If you rarely see a keg fly by. It seems that we're blocked by somebody or something. But as we get moving through the rest of these events, uh, we got a nice angle for you guys to get up and close and personal. Uh, with these competitors and see some big lifts the stuff we really like axle deadlifts log presses natural stone to shoulder maybe one of the most painful events in strongman besides a hold is a jagged edged natural stone to shoulder never a fun thing to load 
no two stones are the same. That would be like Snowflake, I think. It'd be difficult to find two that would be, unless they were cast in a mold, but they wouldn't be natural then. Answering our own questions here. Okay, here's the pyramid. Build it. No, he says, no, I'm done. Oh, there he goes. What's he doing? Oh, the wrong order. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, that that's a rule then, I guess. Okay. In order. Well, that would only make sense. I don't know if anybody wants to put the 250 keg on top. Strongest man on earth, too. Boy, that's another thing I really love that's going on in our community. By the way, Brian Shaw's competition. Giving World Strongest Man a run for it. And if you guys know anything about Brian Shaw, and not just his ability to be a great strongman, but, uh, yeah, he knows, how to, he knows how to get the promoting aspect of things done as well. That's going to be interesting this year. I think that's going to challenge World Strongest Man as the a legitimate, I don't want to, you know, go too far with the commentating about what's what's good and what's not good out there. But we'll say Brian's going to put together uh, a, a very interesting show. I think we're all going to we're all going to be uh, able to witness some real big feats of strength there at that show. Uh, not so much a television production, I'm sure. Looking around the parking lot again, it's growing. Our spectating, as our seating is to capacity, people standing around the edges here, even behind, as you guys can see over there behind the kegs, probably 200 people out here right now. He's in a really good spot here in Portage, man. Right on the main strip. You can't drive by this place without seeing what's going on. Lots of beards around this place, too. If you guys didn't know, most strongmen have beards. Unless you're Nick O'Hare. Oh, wow. I'm just reading some of the comments here. Let me catch you guys up a little bit. This is new to me. I did not know this. Great Lakes Men's Middleweight Pro. This Great Lakes Strongest Man Middleweight Pro. If I read this correctly, we got Luke Davies is going to be there, which is great. Uh, Nick O'Hare, of course. Uh, Blake Shelton. Danko. Holland. Summers. Swisher. Uh, and that's a, a, a promoter pick there. Uh, Shugars. Yeah, wow. That's going to be interesting. And O'Hare is paying out. This is at Battle of the Beach. Uh, Nick O'Hare is paying out all of his open classes in his competition. Well, you're, you're gone for a few months, and everything gets better, doesn't it? I love it. Boy, hard to keep up, though. Like I said, lots of new, new faces in the sport already. It's like a blink. Just go away for a few months, get off social media, and come back. Let me tell you, it is entertaining. This sport just continues to grow. I've been to a lot of these shows, and, and uh, I'm looking around here at these competitors. I probably don't even, I've never seen 40 of them, I'll tell you right now. There's always a surprise in a big bunch like this, too. Somebody's going to impress the heck out of all of us today. And I'll get those weights for you. I think uh, everything is going to be run with a three three attempt uh, uh, rising weight on the deadlift for sure. I think the log is the same. Or is it wraps on the log? Oh, uh, press away. Okay, it's uh, clean once. Press away on the log. Yeah, and that'll be our next event too, the log. Estimated show time, five hours and 26 minutes. <laughs> 
No, just press away. Clean once, press away. Yep. That's pretty typical for a strongman event. Five hours and 26 minutes. Although I think Great Lakes two years ago, I'm not kidding you guys, we had 175 competitors. I think we finished that show in four hours. It was one of the fastest productions of, was it closer to five? But anyhow, that's amazing. Amazing. If you get a chance to come up to the Great Lakes Strongest Man this year, September 14th, that's at Traverse City, that's at Turtle Creek Stadium. It, it is the biggest strongman production in the universe as far as I'm concerned. I, I still don't know if there's a bigger one out there. Uh, maybe, why? Well, yeah, maybe the Arnold, I guess. I don't even know. Yeah, it's amazing. The production's amazing. The uh, backdrop's amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful place to spend the weekend. It's it's not just a day event. It's a weekend event up there in respect to all the different things you can do in Traverse City to enjoy a summer weekend. It's a destination for sure. And we had, so, I don't know what we had last year. Every year it changes. It gets more and more. Close to 200 competitors. Beautiful sunny day. I don't want to jinx us, but I wouldn't. It's always going to be sunny up there and beautiful. Just the way things work. Turtle Creek Stadium, of course, is a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, location to throw a strongman event. We're right on the field. So you can imagine the spectating. There's no bad viewpoint. There's a great, all the seats are great in the house. This is Bellows here. He's breathing a little heavy. Even without, with that CPAC working the way it was, that big boy's breathing. I talked to him. He's about 5'11", 320 pounds. I think you're, yeah, you're snoring awake at that weight, whether the CPAC is working or not. There he goes. It's a lot of work for a big boy. Yeah, he says he's going to go 850 on that 14-inch pull here. That's pretty impressive. So we're going to look forward to watching him on the deadlift. One of these big up and comers in our state. Yep, confirmed. Four hours flat. That was about right at that Great Lakes show. We just confirmed it, Cody. It was four hours. That was two years ago. Were you even there? I was. Oh, you were there. That's right. That you were dying that year. Yeah. Don't remember. You were taking in oxygen, I think. Tyler Thompson, yes, best best ran show by owners we have. When it comes to the size of that production, yeah, you're you're absolutely correct. You don't do that without a, 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 a army of volunteers to start with that move in such choreography to get these events set up and taken down so quickly to run a show that efficiently. Uh, it's difficult to do. George does it for sure. I'm looking forward to watching you again, Tyler, this year, by the way. Yeah, no easy way to carry a heavy keg, except the guy in the second lane, the giant with the beard over there. <laughs> He's just lifting them all up to his waist. Try not to expose the, or try not to let it sit on the quad. You might be able to move. Oh. oh, oh, that's not even open guy. Yeah, 50 pound pony keg. It's not even fair. That's okay. We all start somewhere. You're allowed to use lighter weights if that's your class. I thought this was done 10 minutes ago. See, I, yeah, I'm <laughs> falling right into it. I forgot. These events, these when you think they're done, they're generally not. Oh, CPAP. Did I say CPAC? I did say CPAC. Well, I've never needed one. Although, I, I shouldn't say that. I probably needed one. I probably do. I probably still need one. You have stayed in the same hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rough. 
Yeah, I quit breathing frequently. I don't know, though. I'm pretty svelte these days. I'm a solid 271 with a top ab. Nice job. Pyramid built. That's, our, that's, a, that's a pretty tough Masters guy right there. That's a good run. Super heavyweight. Okay. Well, he looks like a Masters guy. He's got gray in his beard. Okay. Probably one of those stud Masters guys that still compete as an open guy. I don't know. I, I thought I would do it. Then I'm, I didn't. And I still ripped my tricep off the bone. <laughs> Ridiculous. Speaking of Corey Loper, there he is. All six foot nine of them. Easy work. Strides out about five feet. There's really no advantage to height in this particular run. Everybody's getting there pretty quick. The advantage is the height, as Corey just made an example of those kegs in that pyramid. That's how you build a pyramid. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think he just got that one. Yeah, it does help to be tall and strong, man. It does help. People will argue it both ways, I know. Oh, short guy's got this, and short guy's got average, and whatever. Whatever. Tall is better. There's some tough short guys out there, no doubt, but I think they'd all agree they wish they were four inches taller doing strongman. We're going to bring uh, we're gonna bring Cody into the broadcast in about five minutes after this event. He's going to co-commentate with me, kind of just warming up here. I like to call him Cody Rippinger, but it's not pronounced like that. It's Rebarger. There's no N in it. I don't, anyhow, we'll, we'll, well, yeah, take me, what, 10 years to get it right? I uh, know you don't. I think you do it on purpose. A veteran in the sport of strongman at the Great Lakes for sure. Yeah, a couple competitions, back to back years. Always supports the local strongman community here in the state of Michigan. And he's got a bitchin' red beard to go with it. Like everybody else that's in Strongman at some point grows a beard, besides Nick O'Hare. I don't think Nick can grow facial hair, honestly. No. no. Well, I've seen his hairy chest. It's all on his chest. Congratulations, George Buller, by the way, on his new baby girl. Do you see that George is a father again for the third time? He waited. Tracy made him wait till his sperm count dropped so he can get that girl made. I know what you, I know what you guys did, George. You're both in the health field. I know you were playing the odds. Corey did look smooth on that. I just guy that guy's just growing, honestly. All right, final novice men. We're still on novice men. Oh, fourth. Okay. Into, like I said, cameras been on these logs. You guys are all just kind of getting to know this competition a little bit. It's in a great spot here in Portage, slash Kalamazoo, Michigan. Raw strength. God, I love this gym. I wish we had one next to us somewhere, just like this. No. Too many bodybuilders in our area. Boo-hoo bodybuilders. We're going to start to see the sweatshirts come off eventually. I'm noticing that might be one of the first competitors that has gone with the T-shirt today without the uh, under thermal. Easy work. Show off. Show off. It's one of those middleweight guys. 
They're always showing off. I like how this crowd is shifting. There's nobody in the back now. There's like seven people standing up. They're all huddling up in front of us. Body heat. It's probably all that. Yeah, you're right. I do put out a lot of hot air. Oh, I think this is our master's guy, right? You want to know how you can tell they're masters, guys? He's choppy-stepped. He doesn't want to stride out because those old knees can't take it. That's not a knock on him. I'm just saying. That's how you identify a masters guy. They move a little more gingerly. That's a big word, I know. Cody will be joining us here for the next four events. And that's another reason why you know it's Masters guy. He's taking a nap right after he's done. We get tired fast. It's true. Oh, I like this. Look at look, George, Nick. Look at what's what he's doing. Take notes, you guys. Jeremy has got one of those number flip charts. Can you see that in the frame there? By the log, you will, and it actually will tell you what the weight is on the log. Nice. Love this. As a commentator, we appreciate that when our notes go flying. Uh, that happened last year. Boy, that was a tough day to start at Great Lakes. It was a windy day. Let's just say that. You, oh, did you grow a beard while I was out? Last six months, Nick said he grew a beard. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. It doesn't take that long, I guess. Maybe there's some facial hair coming. It took me about three years to grow this lush beard of mine. Let me check. Angle, angle. Oh, kegs are done. We're on to log. I think that's pretty good. So you see the little weight flip right in front there. Yeah, the red says 100 and the blue says 200. Take notes. That's good. All right, I'm going to take a little break here. I'm going to pause out. Uh, when I come back, Cody will join us. In the meantime, the camera's going to be showing uh, all the spectators for all this people watching you guys are doing out here today.
All right, everybody, I'm back. Added a mic. Joining me, of course, is uh, Cody. Hey, how's it going? Cody, welcome yeah. to the show. Hey, thanks. I mean, I've been yeah. here the whole time. But... Good to have you here. Yeah, he has been here the whole time. I've been, I was not talking to myself. It was actually you in the background. Hooked up another mic. Now we can have a little banter back and forth during our second event, which is the log press down in front, right? How's that yep. look? Yeah. We looking good? Yeah, you guys should have a better vantage point with this camera angle to this event. We have a little spectator heads in the front, I guess. Of course, yeah. the tall guy in the white sweatshirt's got to sit down right in the very front row. Right, yeah. So we have the back of his head. But if you notice, there's uh, 200 pounds in the left lane, 150 pounds in the right, right lane, excuse me. It's clean once, press for reps, right? Yep, and you can also do a viper press, which is just one movement straight up. Well, that's wishful thinking in a press for reps kind of scenario, though, isn't it? You would viper rep the very first rep, I think. Yeah, you definitely like to uh, keep that energy as much as possible, conserve as much as you can right off the top there. Yeah, this is one of those events that'll suck the life right out of you. The weight of that log sitting on your chest a lot of times will just drive the air right out of you. Now, I believe you can, pro is it set the log down, you're done, or how do we, uh, or is there a one minute time limit? Okay. So you, uh, yeah, you set the log down as many times as you want. You have 60 seconds to perform as many reps as you want. You only are required to clean it once. You're gonna see a lot of these guys pick this log up, uh, probably three, four reps, set it back down, take a deep breath, get the wind back in them and try it all over again. And I'd say we're probably looking at eight to 10 reps for the top guys in this particular weight at 200 pounds. I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna say 10 is gonna be your number right now at 200. Of course, the judges have a lot to do with that too, how quick that down command comes. Seemed a bit slow to me right there. Of course, you need to be in control of the log as well. Locked out, look at the judge, head through. You guys hear a Cody out there on the microphone by chance? Should I do like a check one two? Yeah, give me a check one two, Cody. Check one two. Oh, you just got a soft feminine voice. That's the problem. Yeah, that's why he has a beard. If you didn't, he'd look. Well, God like a girl. decided to take away the hair. All right, the women on the 100-pound log. That is no easy feat. Pressing for a woman is not an easy task. It's so It's on the chest there. All right, here we go. Time, one minute. There's a nice little viper right there. Yeah, absolutely. Three reps on the left. Nice. Little like it? Ah, very smart. Exactly like you said, set it down, take a breath, get right back into it. Push press on the left. Not a lot of leg drive. That catches up to you eventually. Strong guy, though. Really good rhythm over here on the right. Yeah, he's really he's really got some good strength pressing that out. That's it. I'll Look at take that. my just six or seven, forward. call it good. Yeah. Look at her just go. I got a sneaky suspicion that that girl came from CrossFit. Yeah, right.
I think there's something else that. Just calling George out, aren't you? Is he? Yeah, I haven't seen a picture of him lately. Okay. De Broom Boy is an important job. Nor do you want to be. Nice press. Really <laughs> Just a little bit of a leg drive there, not much. All right. Yeah, the main thing main thing they're looking for is ears ears forward, head forward. That's what they're looking for, that that, that down count. You know, strongman used to be divided like the Red Sea. You had the pullers and the pressers. Two yep. different. Nowadays, not so true. You got to be uh, equally good at both. And we're going to see a lot of that here today. So I imagine the pressers out here today. Anybody out there, give us a comment on the uh, mic volume, mic check, to our audience out there. Appreciate it. This is... Big Joe McFadden. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Nice pressing in the left lane there. A lot of guys out there will tell you they prefer power over pressing when it comes to, or the reps when it comes to the pressing. Yeah. And there's a good reason for that. It's called blood flow to the brain. Yeah. yeah. That is obvious with your pressing too, by the way. <laughs> Nice work. Grind out the last rep. One rep, one inch, one pound, one second. Separate first from last pretty quick. It's amazing. Yeah, it's good to point out. A lot of the novice guys won't have a grip shirt. It is helpful. It keeps that log held nice and tight up high on your chest. Also, to a, a nice tight pair of elbow sleeves never hurt anybody. Yeah. Pure static press. There's all sorts of strategies when it comes to the log press, and that's what's interesting. I'm not so like sure static stru static pressing should be one of them, though. Fair. I was more so going with the startup. Yeah. I mean, there's brute strength involved in everything, but, boy, if you can just learn a little dip, a little yeah. push press, something. Yeah. Boy, Generating that, goes that force output from the feet all yeah. the way through the body. It is a skill that is learned for sure. It, for years, I static pressed. I couldn't get, avoid it. As a matter of fact, I barely push press these days. But it does help. It's almost like I can't get my brain to work with a drop step or anything. You know, it's. I mean, there's a lot of moments where you can't get your brain to work. That is true. That is true. Today is not one of them. Hopefully. No, I'm just cold today. Although I think it's about two degrees warmer than it was. An hour ago, which is what, yeah. about 39?
We're having a quick rules meeting up there. It doesn't hurt right. to ask. Jen here. Jen over here on the right has been super impressive to watch train for this thing. Oh, you're familiar? Yeah. Okay. Two twenty five in the log now on the left or lane one we'll call it. One fifty for the ladies. That is usually frowned upon. Yeah, a little surprised by that. I mean <laughs> I didn't expect any of these guys to zero the log. Log is a weird thing. It like, is, it is, in their defense. Yeah. The really the only good way to train for a log is, is with a log. With Yeah, a lot of guys dog me at the gyms that don't provide that for them, and it, it'll catch up to you at a show for sure. There you go, get a rep. I don't think he got the rep. Yeah, that's deflating. Really good thing to train for. It's really getting that thoracic area. upper back. Do you have to use big words right now? We don't have to use big words. Thoracic. Thoracic's too big of a word. Well, lower back? Do we call it lower back? That, Middle that's back? Your upper back. Upper back. See, the I didn't know. Part of your spine. Oh, thoracic. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. Where you can tilt that back. And press for us meatheads, up. we say that lower, so middle, much. and upper back. No. No. Listen, who who's torn their, their tricep on a press here? That is that is true with no warm-up right. or an elbow sleeve. All right. I made a lot but of mistakes that day. At the same time, who also sprained their ankle, stepping off a step and slipping on mud? I wouldn't go. Yeah, I wouldn't go telling people that story. So I guess I can't really joke about that. What kind of elbow sleeves that guy got on? That's our heavy-duty elbow sleeves. It looked like triple ply. Those are, sorry to call you out, but no, those are actually the single ply of the uh, Cerberus. Oh. He but just must have huge biceps or something. Yeah. Okay. And forearms. Let's look at the size of his forearms. Mm. I'm predicting eight reps. Look at that go. It's like it's nothing. I'm just burying him with that 12 inch. Just all that rhythm right Three. there. Three. Okay. We're lane two, kicking butt over there. Little surprised, although his elbows are really low. It's very helpful, guys, to keep your elbows up and that log is back yeah. as far as you can get it. Sometimes these guys will get that log back, but their elbows are still dropped, and it's really a tough yeah. angle to come out of yeah. the hole. Even something as simple as a log press, as far as the mechanics go, are huge. Yeah, just learning those little tiny trips, the tips and tricks. Yeah, dropping a log on the head—I've done that. Does not feel good. Well, listen. Sometimes you don't need reps if you look good. Yeah. I thought the guy on the left looked really good. Nice sleeves, nice wraps. Our second grip shirt. Somebody's taking notes. Yeah. Grip shirts, I mean. Grip they, shirts they need to come back. Grips. I don't know where they're at today. Why? Why don't we need them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're strong enough without them. Who are we? Yeah, that's right. Although I'd highly advise the elbow sleeves. Yes. He's got it half right. Grip shirt, okay. I'll beat him up too hard. See, elbow sleeves to get you out of that position right there. Yeah, it'd yeah. be a little assist in that lift. Yeah, nice little rebound at the bottom yep. there. Nice work in lane two, grinding it out. Fun thing with the log is that it's really easy to hit yourself in the chin with it. If you're really just trying to rep it out and you're just brute forcing it. Yeah, the chin is kind of the assist. You keep it under the log a bit, don't you? Yeah. You know, any guy that wears glasses, sunglasses to a log press has got my vote. <laughs> I like it. I always say when in doubt, just look cool.
I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure the log is like my sworn enemy. I'm not a fan. Is what? It's my sworn enemy. I'm not a fan, but I'll do it. <sighs> well, sometimes you got to train things you don't like to train, Cody. Sometimes you also want to actually measure your log because you could buy one that says 12 inches and measure it and find out it's actually a 13 inch diameter. <laughs> oh, excuses, excuses. That makes a difference, dude. And listen, there'll be no measuring logs around here today, sir. This is a family friendly show. Logs beating guys up more than I thought it was going to here. It is the first show of the year for a lot of these guys, working the rust off. They can. They have 60 seconds in total time, so you can put it down as many times as you want. Is your boy coming up? What's his name? Julian. Julian looks like he's made to press. Big broad shoulders, big chest. Ten reps. There they come. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he's going to run out of time. That's a quick call. It's almost more impressive that he's got his hat forward, too, and just, like it's nothing. What's the over-under on the hat falling off? Because he's going to get to, like, 15 reps. There, there it goes. goes. That's six reps. Oh, that was a Samson. That guy's built to press. I knew he was walking around. That's not invisible lat syndrome that guy's got. He's got a huge back. There you go. A little show off. Uh, I like that. All right, that was good. I like that. Nothing wrong nice with that. Nice little one-legged. A little one-legged finish there. <laughs> Julian's rocking that log out. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Going for more. Vipers it up for number 15. What? Add some weight to that log. It's his only novice competition. It's over with. That's it. Show off. Yeah, yeah. Impressive, your son's in point. Uh, it is. Uh, this, one is yeah. this one's just one weight class, right? It, it, yeah, it's, one, it's all novice yeah. because we didn't expect as many novice to come. So, especially being one of the first ones of the year. So. Yeah, incredible turnout for novice today. And some good novice at that. Yeah. Julian is one of them. Yeah. 14 reps? Yeah, that's what I thought. Only doing 12 inch for women out here today. That's the log, folks. Is this why? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it, good to point out that a lot of the pro women out there use a 12 inch log. Yeah. That was kind of new to me last year. Yeah. There's a lot of different directions this conversation could go in right now. Let's not go there. I know what you're doing over there. I know what you're thinking. Don't do it. Well, I listen, you got to start somewhere. Why 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 give them a, why even give a 10-inch log out anymore? There's no point. We really need to talk quit talking about log size. It's making me feel uncomfortable. I know. Victim of my own word vomit. I gotta pay closer attention to my comments, guys. Sorry, I missed a few things there, but I didn't see the split stance. Now I wish I would have saw it. Eric Schimmel, shout out to you. It's on the Gym Life podcast. 
if you want to go watch the replay, it'll be up there. Yep. Lane one, this guy's this guy's stacked. Looks like Chad Coy out there. Gloves, wraps, sleeves, shirt. No knee wraps though. No full body suit. That would be Chad Coy if you had a full body suit. And I'm not making fun either. Right? That's totally what you need to do. Compression is the best. Uh, yeah, oh, that that did move up 250. I was wondering, it looked a little heavy there. All right, now we're getting into some weight. You're saying an empty log itself. Yeah. I'm not sure what brand these logs are, but speaking of brands... I didn't see what's going on out there. Okay. Just a little delay in the action. Speaking of brands, the Matt Little brand is coming back to Great Lakes. George uh, pointed out a little earlier that he built something called the Deadlift Tower. Yeah. Yeah, he can have some pretty crazy stuff up. I'll tell you. So I'm excited about that, by the way. Yeah. You know, he's a farmer, so it makes complete sense. The guy can fab anything. I understand he's got like a farm that's like a 2,000 acres or something, you know? And he still finds time to train strongman and actually compete, which is nuts. What do we got here in the right lane? Is that 150 there? 175. Okay. You know, I like the form there. His a non-competitive standpoint. When those elbows are really low like that, as the log sits on your chest, you're it, it's it's you're going against physics. You have to get those elbows up to really get that press started. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Look at he's sporting a Great Lakes strongest man shirt. He's been here before. Nice head through, quick, snappy. He does. <laughs> you're illegitimate, son, for sure. He's a, he might be a little better looking than you, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. Nice work. Snap head through shifts that from front front of back medium goes. It really is important. You see a lot of guys kind of bench press that log up when they get heavier and then try to snap that head through. <laughs> I would advise against it, but yeah, yeah. Oh, a blink on the camera there. Okay. Go, Ben. I like I like it when they announce names.
Ben Schinken. Schinken. Now he's got that bench press style press, that that way back lean. It, it, getting the head through on that. It, it, there he goes. Yeah. Five on 250, number six. There he goes. Little break. And he's done. He's done. Those heavyweights run out of breath. They don't even want to try to take another breath. Could be a pit bull log, 85 poundish, Joe McFadden says. Yeah, I think he's right. The one on the right, anyhow. Could be a Titan log on the left, which is what, about 91 pounds or something? Yeah, they're close to 100. Yeah, so as a woman training log, I mean, you're kind of forced to, yeah. That is a great question, Joe. I'm, I'm not so sure I've seen one. A 400-pound log ever go up in a Michigan competition. I don't see a lot of max logs anyhow, so, yeah, I'd have to go back on that one. Good question. Anybody out there could answer that? Yeah, George doesn't think so either. He thinks uh, somebody from RPG will hit it soon. I'm thinking that might be Matt Kehoe he's talking about. Oh, Jake, Jake Webb could, could arguably be that guy too. Yeah. You know, comp times doesn't translate in training. You know, a lot of these guys are capable of doing a lot of weight on these logs and a lot of reps, and you get into competition, you start throwing in the, the weights and the warm-up and the first event. And nice thing is this is the second event, so we're getting a little more out of these guys than we generally would, you know, later in a competition. So a 400-pound log, albeit I know Joe would agree with me, probably a half dozen guys have done it in training. <laughs> but getting to do it at a competition is a whole different animal. Oh, yeah. No. Back in there earlier today, that, that was fun yeah. surprise. You know, and these are competitions aren't broke up like World's Strongest Man. They're not doing two events a day. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, we just rep them out as fast as we can, and then we try to go home. For those of you looking to get in the sport, yeah, you stay strong for six hours. Get them 100% out of yourself. Good luck. That's, that's a nice little break in there. If you listen to George and his four- to five-hour Nobody can do it. minutes of event. Hey, these promoters are all great, but nobody can do it like George. Get out of here. Rochester Performance Gym. RPG. That's uh, Ben Paul Eyes. Uh, gym. Uh, got Joe McFadden there. Oh, Joe McFadden, or not Joe McFadden. It's got Matt Kehoe. Jake Webb, uh, I think, still train there. So does uh, Brian. What is it? What's his last Boucher, right? Uh, he owns the Oxford Gym. His brother trains there. He just won. Uh, what's Brian? Bonet. Brian Bonet's brother worked. Yeah. He just won some big master show last year, nationals or something. No, maybe not. Anyhow, he's a good competitor. Ooh, well that that would explain the bald spot on the top of his head. A lot of log rubbing going on there. Jared, Jared Bell, this guy's great. I love this guy. 
mean, I log weighs as much as you do. He's a humble guy. He's a big dude. What is that weigh? Oh, it does weigh as much as me. So that's I'm a little lighter than that log. Actually. Someone, pr someone's pressing you. Two seventy-five log. Look at that snap. <laughs> There's complete. That's pretty impressive, though. That's three really good reps. The guy's a bet. I bet you he bent. Press is like 600. We've got 175 over on the right. Yep. Watch out, spotters. That's why you don't stand too close to a guy with a log in his hand. Yeah. Oh, wait, weight's coming off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't that's, think he had another one in him anyhow. Yeah. I think he's good. Well, Listen, if why... Jared Bellows figures yeah. out how to get any type of leg drive into his lip, yeah. he might be your first. 400 pound presser. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. So, besides, you know, almost slaughtering a spotter, it also bounces that clip off. Which is make sure you, you set it down because of that reason alone. They can bounce that clip right off. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jason Money, that's who we're talking about. Uh, George just mentioned Jason Money is another guy that potentially could be that 400 pound presser. You know, I think pressing to some degree is kind of a, it's been left behind with all this posterior stuff and deadlifting and yeah. zerker walks and all this other crazy stuff out there. Guys just aren't pressing as much as they used to. I mean, there's always, there's still always a pressing event. Of yeah, sort, the circus dumbbells like, taking like over. One. It's like, you know, it's like one event. It always typically starts the event. It's that axle or the circus dumbbell or something. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think we need to bring back a good max log. Although, you You know, you've got someone like Nick who's putting in a natural. Make it real difficult on everybody. <laughs> well, listen, I think he got a rep, but despite that, he's got the best beard in the place right now, even better than yours. Lane one I'm talking about. I don't think lane two even has any chin hair. Oh, yeah, he does. A little pat. Patch, a little soul patch. I'm starting to get gassed out over here. Snuck one more in there. Foot placement also makes a huge difference when it comes to that drive. Well, he's got a perfect shelf to hang that log on. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Joe used to have a big shelf like that too, didn't you? Of course, you've been slimming up. Sam Clapper. I've seen Sam around. I think uh, maybe last year at this show and maybe Great Lakes. He's a master. Wait a minute. No, why would he be? He's 275. That's a heavy log. We're at oh, the... Logan Money. I thought he said, oh, Jason Bonet. Jason Bonet. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah, that mixed yeah. up. Thanks, George. Where at in the lift of a, of a log press would you take a breath in when doing for reps, Joe? What's that? Where at in, when you're pressing for reps with a log, where would you get that, that next breath in? When I set the log down, I yeah. hold my breath. Yeah. yeah, I hold it. 
The other one is, is like when it's coming back down to the chest, you can try to sneak one in. It's difficult, but you can try it. Yeah, I like to brace myself, stay real tight, and yeah. just kind of pass out eventually. Let's see what Corey Loper's got here. Uh, finding his foot placement there. And he's trying to keep that log up high on that down. That, not a bad move, really. Always smart to ask for how much time is I, so I think can... control only like that's a little tough, yeah. though. It takes a bit out of you. I'm more of a log crash to chess guy after I get the lock out. You know? <laughs> yeah, well... You don't have to be great at every event. You really just want to be great at a, at least one in a competition. And, and the don't rest zero any. Wanted, they just don't zero. Yeah. He didn't zero. He's always good. Honestly, Strongman's a points game. You know. Well, Brian Shaw made that a thing yeah. because I, I, I think looking back at his competitions, he was always about the points. Yeah. That's right. Consistency pays. Well, it pays nothing in this sport, but... <laughs> Money wise, it is. Who did? Oh, did he have a chest problem there? He's pointing at his chest? Oh, he did. Okay. Okay. We'll give him that excuse. We know he's got more in the tank. I didn't know what was going on there. Corey's coming off of a chest cold, so the breathing's a bit of an issue today. Pressing. It just Tall guys generally so have a tough that, time pressing it anyhow. So much of that but we'll give him that excuse. We'll give him that excuse. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. At the same time, when you have to lift it up as tall as he is. Right, I get it. I get that's it. going to take a lot of blood flow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is. He's got the inhaler going. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. One seventy five in the right lane. We weren't ignoring the right lane. We just had a little more entertainment value in the left lane for a minute. There's a guy right there just coming all natural. Yep. Pair of shorts and a t shirt. No wrist wraps, no elbow sleeves, no grip shirt, no knee, knee wraps. I promise you the next show he comes to though, he might have all. Yeah, right. He might have all of them. Oh, he does have wrist wraps. My bad. Good for him. That was good. Yeah. Love our really novice good. competitors. Uh, we need more of you guys. Don't be afraid. You get that first contest under your belt, your bit. That's it. And yes, no matter how hard you train, you will be humbled. Oh, yeah. In fact, my best events in training tend to be my worst ones in competition. It's so frustrating. You'd be the strongest guy in your gym. Go to a strongman show and find out you're really not the yeah. strongest guy around. And usually the ones that I struggle with in, in training, I tend to rock out pretty well. I'm like, I don't know what happened. You'll be like a 350-pound monster, and you'll go to a competition, and a guy like Nick O'Hare will be, and you'll want to oh, shoot wow. yourself. Head. Yeah. I'm kidding, Nick. I'm kidding. 231. Sometimes. Time's actually flying by. We're an hour and 40 minutes into the show. I still feel good. The Monster Energy drink is doing its job. There you go. It's warmed up a bit. I bet you it's about low 40s right now. Every now and then the sun comes out, feels nice, and then does, clouds yeah. come, and you feel it that does. breeze again. How's our vantage point? Looks good. Camera looks good. I think we're getting these logs in.
Where are we at? Uh, 175 in the left lane now. That weight was changed. That's that big novice men's category. So as you look in the, the right lane, or lane one as I call it, uh, this is that big novice class. Get ready to watch some up-and-comers in this class, maybe yeah. some guys that will make some waves this year in the state. Well, what's nice is this is head-to-head -head right here, so both the same weight. Okay, we got them in both lanes. Novice men in both lanes, guys. Still walk in the park there in the right. Yeah. The guy's just pressing away. Taking a breath. Press away. Take a breath. Press away. You know, a lot of guys will train this too where they'll – uh, do the five or six in the gym, set it down, yeah. note the time. Yeah. You know, you'll replicate that a lot, a lot of times in competition. Well, it's really Even though you feel you can get that extra rep or two, you won't. Yeah. Just take the breath. It means more. It's, take that it's rest. It's really important to work that clean. Get that down as fast as possible, as smooth as possible. With as little energy as possible. Yeah. 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 A, lot a lot of guys of people... struggle. They, they put a lot in the, They don't put enough into the clean. Yeah. It takes a lot of the reps away from them. Yeah. I think a lot of people train the pressing aspect, but that clean... You really want to get that down as fast and as tight as possible. Yeah, I would call that the easier part of the lift, actually, the it press is. compared yeah. to the clean. Especially as that weight, that weight of that log gets high. Yeah. To keep that tight to your chest and get it up, it, it's a it's yeah. a skill in itself. Yeah. Just snapping it right up there is. You want to get that down, so don't you don't waste any extra seconds. You don't waste any extra energy. You just want that to be nice and tight. Just like that. They're going pretty quick in one there. I don't know if he's getting every one of those reps on the call down. I think the judge is being pretty lenient, as many judges should in the novice class. Let's not beat these guys up too hard. As they get better, they'll go to bigger shows to be tighter calls. Yeah. And then you get so good, you get to the biggest shows, and they let you get away with murder again. Yeah. If you get really good, they'll just World you know, gear, man. They'll gear the, the comp towards you. Uh, you know what? We're not going to talk about that. Yeah. The year of the lockouts last year at World Strongest Man, nobody, everybody's uh -huh. getting the – you didn't see those calls? No. Go back and watch it. So the deadlift, uh, the, which is a wagon wheel, it's a max wagon wheel deadlift. That's three, that'll be a three attempt rule, the jump in when you're ready scenario. Yep. Max Wessels rules. The Wessels rules, yep, right. Oh, so they're using the power bar for that. So they're uh, using yeah. the axle, so yeah, it's a power bar, which is, a, which is very uh, stiff. Stiff, yep. yep. That was a nice grind right there. What's the Shaw gear called again? Is it called uh, Brian Shaw's uh, equipment line? Evolution? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love those elbow wraps. That's what lane one's got there, it looks like. Yeah. It's really nice. Gives you that adjustable yeah. compression yeah. of the forearm and the bicep. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, gotta be careful when, when it comes to setting that down. You can, you can rip it out and get as many reps. You can be in the lead, and if you set it down just wrong, you can be disqualified for it. So, oh, the DQ, careful. the yeah, yeah, gotta be careful. I, I rare, I don't know if I've seen that no. ever. 
I don't think but anybody's he did break intentionally. The sign, so now, yeah. Oh. Now I have no idea. What I the know there's are. stories out there of guys getting DQ'd. I, I've personally never seen anybody get DQ'd at a show. Yeah. I mean, you have to do something pretty intentional. I don't know. I mean, if a judge was pissing me off enough, I might throw a log at him. Well, you'd be running pretty fast too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you get to see the speed. Really oh, it's that, or it's that. Oh, yeah. good. I knew there was a way to get you moving. Fight or flight, baby. <laughs> That's right. Because generally these judges are <laughs> bigger than the competitors. Not in this show, but. Yeah, so. Getting the lock out of the elbows. On so we got one lock going away. Which would imply we're almost done through this. Uh, boy, I hope they're not putting it away because it would be wrong with it. What's that? The log. They just took it back. We threw that event so quickly, huh? Wow. Yeah. I'm just chatting away here. Oh, no. It's just done. Oh, perfect. Great. Wow. We actually might make that five hour and 26 minute mark. That was the predicted time that the show would finish. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, listen, uh, another break. We'll let these axle deadlifts come out and uh, warm ups take place. I think we've got about 10 minutes or less, and we'll be back and we'll just pound it on our energy drink, and we're here to entertain all day. Enough to stop a heart.
All right, we're back. We are just in time for the axle wagon wheel deadlift. Uh, 250 pounds in the right lane, 450 to start in the left. This is Wessel's rules, three attempts and you're out. You just jump or right three, in. Three weights and you're out. Uh, not three attempts, I'm you sorry. Three attempts, yeah. Well, you essentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. You you jump in, you do your lift. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And you get three attempts at that lift or, or just three weight attempts? Uh, three weight attempts. Right, that's right, okay. Refresher course here, even for me. Now these guys had a chance to warm up in the gym. Sometimes they'll let competitors come in to take their non-attempts on lighter weight to warm up. I don't know if Jeremy's allowing that today or not. So it is a 30-second uh, time limit to try and attempt it. Okay. So if you can get it within the 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds on the attempt. Okay. Generally, you miss the first. You don't usually get the second. It's always nice to see. Some reluctancy at the bar here. It's not moving that, that smoothly yet. We're going to pick up some speed here in a minute. Well, and these are, uh, I might have said this earlier, but these are power bars. So it's not an axle bar and it's not a deadlift bar. So it's real. They nice do not deadlift. move. They're essentially yeah. lifting a, well, an axle essentially. Yeah, like an actual one. But it's a bar, it's a bar, standard bar width. Yeah. Which there is a, you know, there, there's an advantage to that, of course. Yeah, he almost jumped that down command and <laughs> pulled it right back up. Highly advised figure eights. Or wraps or, st or straps, excuse me. Straps, um, yeah. A little lighter weight, straps you probably will see rates. a lot of. Over or under non wrapped, yeah. Yeah. non strapped attempts. Yeah. The uh, preferential power lifter will do that. Yeah, you know who those guys are when they come up to the bar. Yeah. I tend to go back and forth between straps and figure eights. It's just kind of like whichever is my fixation for the week. Well, certainly with this sort of max attempt, yeah. you know, I, I, I could, I'll generally use a strap. Yeah. You know, figure eights are convenient for, you know, medleys, speed work, that kind of thing, when yeah. time's involved. I find, I find they're better for axles. Oh, for sure with axles yeah. and yeah. figure eights. And, and, you know, in all honesty, that. If you pull a figure eight, you allow yourself about another inch out of that pull than you generally would get strapped into yeah. a bar. So it just depends, I guess. As long as your fingertips are around that bar, yeah. you know, it counts. So you can yeah. really come up high on those those uh, figure eights. And it might be a distinct advantage here, 14 inches off the ground. It's a it's no man's land yeah. really. It's it's not a it's almost easier for some guys to pull from the floor than it is this mid range yeah. if you don't train it. Really excited about to see some of the weights that we're going to see moved here today from that novice class. Generally, those big pullers can come from a novice class or the ones you see kind of succeeding right away in the yeah. sport. That's the fun thing about the deadlift events is that there's so many different ways to train for it. Yeah, they're, they're, you're right about that. Not just ways to train for it, but your training, yeah, well, training blocks and yeah. exercises. and yeah. You can do rack pulls, you can do pause deadlifts. I mean, the posterior find... chain is 80% a strongman. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's probably 100%. I can't think of really anything. There's no bench press in strongman, so I, I don't know. Although there was at the Shaw Classic. The bench press machine they were in, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I don't think that went over real well. I don't think we'll no. see that again. It's it's the one thing we like to pride ourselves on that separates us from uh, powerlifting is we don't bench. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure it's because no, no real strongman can actually bench a lot. So yeah. I always prided myself on being that one strongman that was capable of a big bench. 
Yeah. But see, a big chest gets in your way, though, especially on that log clean. Yeah. You know, it's, you really don't want it, you know. Nice attempt there. It's an unusual bar height. I would argue a lot of these novice didn't. 18-inch pull. Yeah. You really got to sit back on that pull. You can't come over the bar with it. You'll find yourself stalling out a bit. You notice that last guy there, he he was really trying to sit back on that bar, and that's, that's the right thing to do. Try to start ramping it up as soon as possible. Which is a whole nother bag of tricks, by the way. The ramp and the hitch and, yep. you know, it's... it's The old talcum powder. You know, it is uh, it is a trick of strong men for sure. The, the, the ones that are, have a lot of success in it know how to do it very well. A bit of a Mark Felix snatch grip there, I noticed. Yeah. So over there on the right... Shorter yeah. guys love this movement. Taller yeah. guys do not. Yeah. If you're shorter, you can have an easier time getting your knees under it, which can help out quite a bit. Really impressive, this this women's class, that particular athlete there in the white. and the, She's got to be a CrossFitter. We're going to talk to her later and find out. I'm just saying. She's I just, built like a CrossFitter. I just want to comment on how perfectly in sync that drop was for both of those. Just an auditory pleasure. It was nice. It was nice. Uh, you're right. It did seem like a singular drop. This is typically an event where by your third attempt, you want to try to hit a new max, a new PR on these. Say that again. I was saying this is an event that typically on that third third attempt, you really want to try to hit that max or that new PR. It's yeah, it's always cool. nice to be yeah. a launching point for your next competition. You know, you know kind of where you're at. This is a great place to find out. Yeah. Again, uh, competition lifts are much different than training lifts. Yeah. So to know where you're at here as well as into the gym, it's it's a fun note to take. Okay, this is my competition goal, my PR. Let's not confuse the two. A PR gym lift is not a PR competition lift. Yeah. Yeah, so note to all you strong men out there, when you say your PR, it's a competition lift. Can we yeah. just can we be clear on that one yeah. more time? Okay. I'm not seeing the weights now. It looks like they're kind of not rolling with those little signs, the little weight signs. Yeah. A little bit of a letdown there. Note to promoters, if you use the signs. 5'10". 5'10", thank you. Don't get lazy with the signs, that's all I'm saying. All right, never mind, it just went up. 530. Good MC today, by the way. I was talking to him earlier. He actually does baseball games. Young guy, college yeah. guy. Kind of yeah. does it a little bit more professionally than some people. Like who? Me. <laughs> Me. Me too. I'm just here to thoroughly entertain myself, honestly. If it translates to other people, that's great. Yeah. I just like to hear myself talk. Nice lift. It's a working man's pull there. No straps, sweatshirt on, hood up. No will to live. Are you with me right now? I don't know. Your girlfriend texting you or something? What's going on? No. I'm losing you. I think I'm, I think I'm just, like, bringing my own life into this. He's old Pete's. <laughs> His estrogen's high right now, everybody. <laughs> this is one of those events you don't want to piss off your judge either because they have that down command. You really want to try to bribe the judge at this point before the event. 
Oh, hey, the signs came back. It doesn't hurt, that's yeah, right. for sure. I mean, listen, they're not as strict as powerlifting, that's for sure. But. Little ammonia capsules going there, a little. What do you think he's using? Matt. What's your favorite, Skull Smash? No, I like the uh, Atomic Rhino. Atomic Rhino? Yeah. Oh, okay. The red line, it hurts so bad, it makes you hate your life. Gets the job done. <laughs> on the left, I think we're left. at 550 still? 530. Okay. 530? Yeah. Oh, we got a double lift. This got to move it over. Slowing down to a snail's pace here. I just want to see someone do a double underhand. Double underhanded pull, <laughs> like a like a Dorian Yates. What do you call it? Low row. Yeah, there you go. He probably did it with five forty. Oh, there we go. See, they must have heard me. 5.30 and uh, 5, uh, 3.20. That's where we're at. You know, really what we need is just like, uh, you know how they got ring girls that hold up, like, rounds? Oh, yeah. We need that, that at a competition. I mean, I mean we've, got, listen, we've got a broom boy. Why can't we have that? That's what I'm saying. Like a round, round girl kind of, what do they call those, ring girl? 5.40. Well, they need to update their sign. Nick, I, I think if you're listening to this, that'd be great at ba Bash at the Beach. Have some some card girls holding up the weight signs. There you go. I might even be that. I'm totally losing Cody here. Somebody's texting him. He's not happy. I think his girlfriend's breaking up with him. The only only person texting me is you. Oh. That's true. It's the only reason you have your phone. You have no other friends. Look at that grind. Nice pull. That's a great pull right there. Definitely a crossfitter. This is the lull of event three. This should not be a lull right now. This is a max axle deadlift. Well, without the I guess axle. everybody's waiting for that big weight, right? The first yeah. couple of rounds are generally warm-ups. Yeah. Well, this is like... It's a gamble, you know, just like you said, in competition, competition's different than training. So it's kind of a gamble when it comes to these. Like, you really want to be strategic with the weight that you pick, but then it could, it could fly right yeah, up, yeah. and you regret the weight that you started at, or it could just, like, be one that's just really heavy right off the bat. Look at that grind with Carissa there. Boy, it's nice when you jump in for that first one, though. Yeah. And you're already as high as the other guy, yeah. you know, the guys that have already bailed out. Yeah. Yeah. You know who does that? Nick O'Hare. Yeah. It's real humbling, though, when you jump it in is on, that, on that second <laughs> one, humbling. though, and uh, it doesn't yeah. go quite as planned. I remember just that 18-inch uh, charity event that we did. Uh, yeah. Where the, uh, that was kind of that way. With Corey. Corey's he jumped in at like 1,000 pounds or something ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. had an unofficial world record. Yeah, American well, it was an unofficial record. American record, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 1,100 and something. It was cute. It was a cute pull. Well, I tell you, it's it, some things you truly are amazed by. That was <laughs> one of them. It's a great thing about this sport. Mm. Some incredible feats of strength. Nice pull Look on the that. right. Easy, by the way. I think that was her third. She might be a CrossFitter, too. Do I give CrossFit too much credit? I don't think I do. I don't think I give them enough credit. I They're producing gets, some great, strong people into our sport. It gets way worse of a rep than it should. Yeah. I used to be anti-CrossFit. Yeah? Yeah, I, I used to talk that. a lot of smack about it. I can't anymore. I just can't. Maybe it was that Danny Spiegel log press that I can't quit talking about yeah. after all these years. 
not only was it a great feat of strength, but it was just beautiful to watch. Yeah. In every possible sense of the imagination. Good pull on the left. 550. He kept himself nice and long there, yeah. right? right? Full am, use of those figure eights. I am noticing that with almost all these pulls, the right side seems to be. Oh, you're noticing a little dip on the right side? Yeah. An uneven bar, you're suggesting? No, just it's just interesting when you kind of notice something like that. So it's okay. like all right. those are some of the things you want to pay attention Noted. to. Noted. I'll that keep an eye on it. you see all the other people ahead of you, and yeah. you see a bar like that, you may want to shift just like a half inch. Hmm. Interesting. Of course, now that I say that, it's probably not going to do it anymore. So, And these are what, 20-pound jumps right now going up to? I think so. It looks like we're at 20-pound jumps. I, I think that might be a little low. I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the 20-pound jump. That makes for a really long event. Yeah. I think. I'm glad they did 30 seconds. Although it does tend to log pile if you go 50-pound jumps towards the end. You'll get seven guys tying for second. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong there. 20-pound jumps might be all right. Like it was been. I think I'd start at 50 pound jumps to 600, then I'd go beyond that. Oh, now we're breaking out the calibrated plates. What's that? So we, he just broke out the calibrated plates back there. Raw strength's got everything. Calibrated plates here, folks. It's the nice thing about having powerlifting. Mixed you, in. you don't run into that at every gym, by the way. Those are expensive plates. For those of you listening to the broadcast today, appreciate you joining. Well, the Gym Life Podcast, it's back. You want to know why it's back? Because I miss doing this. That and... I got my life back, but despite that, I feel like, you know, the world needs to see more of this. The world needs to see more of these shorts that are up there. Yeah. Look at those cutoffs. But for those of you out there listening, I uh, appreciate it. And just make sure you pass along to uh, these athletes. They're paying little mind to the live stream. Remind them that they can go on and actually look at their video, pull their pull clips of themselves off because we know how much people like posting stuff on social media. The, the best part is you can also mute it. Well, right, right. You don't even have to hear my voice. That's right. Thank you for pointing that out. I just want to make sure. Just make sure know. you tag Jim Life on it. That's all I ask. Jim Life Podcast. I'll get back to doing some real good monologuing. I would if Corey would, controversial. Uh, get out of the way here. That is true. Good to point out. Kilo plates provide more room. Yep. That bar is going up. You know, I I brought I uh live streamed about 15 powerlifting shows, and I still can't convert kilos. 2.205 is the easiest. Yeah, whatever. I know it's not exact. I'm just saying. But... I'm not going to try. Here is my point. I'm 570, kidding. by the way. They're turning the sign, so we're good. 570. Guy's got big quads. Guy. Definitely a puller. He's got the Chuck Taylors on. Nice flat bottom shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's take a close look at that. It looks like a lot of these guys have already got the memo on that. Don't wear your running shoes to deadlift in. No, you want as flat of a shoe as possible. Well. Yeah, driving your heels through the ground. I see some flip flops. Those get interesting. That's just when somebody wants to show off. There you go. That's a nice long pull. I like his style. Keeping himself long, that is. Yeah. Pounds. 
getting nice out here. I think it's about 43 now. It's balmy. Maybe, uh, you know, a balmy like, yeah. 43. Deadlift suits are allowed. Are they? Yeah. Well, oh, apparently. All right. I did not know that. Well, more guys should be wearing a deadlift suit, I would hope, as they get. Well, there is a lot of novice guys here. Well, as soon as I say it's balmy, look who's taking off their jacket now, showing off their pipes. I don't get paid for it anymore, though. No? You know, we're making a lot of dollars. Easy work. I had a little shrug at the end there. Show off. Yeah, you know these big pullers are on the wings right now. We haven't seen a lot of guys yet. What are you guessing? Are we going to see 850 today? Yeah, I think I think it's something that I think 850 is the number. I'm going to say 850. I'm not ready to say over 9. I'm just not. We're we're we go over 9. We're in Great Lakes category like last year. Yeah. You yeah. just never know. I mean, it always surprises you like someone just steps right in and it's going and i would love to see it this is why we come to all these shows this is why we promote the sport as hard as we do because there's always somebody in the tall grass waiting to pounce see everybody's getting rowdy now Oh, we got designated uh, smelling saltzer. Oh, a little there hitch. Like it. <laughs> nice pull. Nice pull. Yeah. Uh, good leg drive there. Just work on that back strength. Yeah. I think that guy will be all right. Start to get that rolled shoulder. You know, you got to keep yeah. that a little tight. Love it. How's that camera angle looking? Pretty good from your vantage point? Yeah. I think we're nailing it here. This is a good setup. Told everybody after the keg walk, I think we lost half our audience for a minute there. It was a chaos. I mean, coincidentally, it's the only event I wasn't commentating on, too. What's that? It wasn't the only. It was the only event I wasn't commentating on. So maybe. That's true. You would have added a whole different layer to it. I guess you know they. I deprived in. our audience. For those of you new to the sport, to be clear, sumo deadlifting is not allowed, which means your hands cannot be inside your knees. Yep. And if you're actually a power lifter and you sumo deadlift, you should get your man card taken away from you as well. No, shut up. <laughs> I see a War of the North sweatshirt. I didn't even know they had those. That must be this year. I missed this year. I had life stuff going on. Did you have some life stuff going on? I did. I've said that about a thousand times. I just want to be clear to everybody. Those days are over. I'm back, baby. I know where to get those sweatshirts, by the way. Where do you get those sweatshirts? That, well, I can't remember the company now that George works with up there. Shoot. Forward Inking. Forward Inking. Man, they are great. They put some great swag out there every single year. I have about seven shirts from Great Lakes over the last couple yeah. years. I wear them every other day and say, I've got sometimes a, every day I've i don't got, even change them i've got quite a few from about three four years ago that still holding up pretty well actually. and jeremy's are very consistent i have last year's i wore it here and now i got the new one on love them his favorite color too green fluorescent green at that you know how you know jeremy's coming you just look and yeah, look for the glasses look for the glasses Six hundred on lane two. They're calling that lane two, by the way. 
the on your left side of your screen is lane two at 600 pounds. N nice. All right. Lay lane one is a lean guy. That's a good pull. Remember, they get 30 seconds to get this lift in. Ooh, short, short pull. I like Look that. Look at that. Wow. Look how fast that was over there for Jen on lane one. That was her first attempt. Yeah, a lot of these guys' first attempt now coming up. Starting at six. I see you'll see the bigger jump, six to seven for a lot of these guys. Then a final pull. I mean, 100 pound jumps are a bit much. Maybe first to second, I would do. That first is generally a warm up for a lot of these guys. Just you know, get the points, get your name on the board. That's it. Don't don't zero out on this. Don't zero this. That'd be piss poor planning. Nice work. Very narrow stance. That's a power lifter stance a bit, yeah. that narrow stance. I, I would try to go as wide as you can on this without being snatchy. Snatch grippy, that is. I mean, Nick Best kind of has that real narrow. He does. Yeah, He's almost so. heels together when he deadlifts. Yeah. yeah. As far as I can. Yeah. Without, like I said, compromising my stance too much. I've seen some pizzas floating around here. Dude, yeah. Sounds man, good, doesn't it? Man. The ones I see are empty boxes. No one told me about them ahead of time. Yeah, we always get the empty box around here. That's what happens to commentators. Although I will say I was catered last year at the Great Lakes. They took my order and everything. Top notch. I'm keeping going. No, there we go. Nice pull. <laughs> yeah, those stiff bars, boy, make that look heavy, don't they? Yeah. No, that's not fun. You know, a lot of these guys will jump in the novice class, and they'll realize they probably didn't need to. What I'm saying, suggesting is that 390 on that bar in the first lane, or as we see it on the right-hand side. Nerves sometimes, too. You jump in early, nerves. Well, again, you know, if you just want to get your name on the board. Yeah, get, uh, not in the novice class in particular. Guy's name is Jeremy. Last name's Jeremy, it looks like. They pulled in the left lane, 600 pounds. Made it look good. We've got ourselves a novice. So he is a novice here. If we, These guys are all men are intermingled. This guy's got a lot of heart. It just keeps pull that bar to your knees. Ramp it up. Yep. He's got it in him. He had a good pull last time at 580. Oh, boy, that's a bummer. Sometimes you just, you know, you crack it. Once you yep. crack it, it feels a little lighter, but that's a good attempt. As a lifter. Sometimes we scratch our heads when we do something and come back only 20 pounds heavier and why it feels like a thousand pounds.
Oh, yeah, get it moving. Nice, nice deadlift. Wearing a socks, figure eights, and a nice haircut. There you go. Polak is up. I wonder if he's or, uh, Polish. There you go. Nice work. It up. Nice work. Yeah, I, I don't mind that stance either. That's what I was talking about. It got low on the bar. George uh, Buller just said that Byron at forward inking, he had a daughter as well. They planned it. They planned their birth. I wonder if they were texting each other the night that they were consummating with their wives. He said, hey, hey. Text message like a thumbs up and a big smiley face or something like that. Is that why you text me that so often? <laughs> well, congratulations. Byron's an awesome dude. And they actually did the printing, come to find out, for this show, which is no surprise. It looks that good. Was, that was Jen with a 410. That was her second attempt, too. So we're going to see what her third attempt will be. I do like the names on the back of the T-shirts. Now that we know Forward Inking has no problem doing it, there's no excuse for George not to get, get it done. Yeah, sometimes you just get gassed. What's that? Sometimes you just get gassed out at these points. Yeah, it, it's you get a brick wall in this particular movement. It uh, it comes fast. It's interesting to start with a moving event and uh, a carry event, like to start a show. I actually way. love that on a cold day like today. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of guys appreciated that. But you know, it takes so much out of you moving weight like that. Grind it out, grind it out. There Look you go. That. Nice job. There's a point of no return there. There's a lot of pressure on yourself when you get it above your knees. Yeah. You better keep that bar moving. Great pull. You know, I did talk to Jeremy about the keg run. He was particular about the distance based on the number of runs. So these promoters actually do think about things sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, I give a lot of uh, gaff about not really giving it much thought about treating their competitors right. You know, like Zerker walks, Zerker yokes, carries. carries. But no, he did because he said it was moving 12 times. So that's good reasoning behind that. Short distance, but a lot of movement. I'd be happy if I never saw a Zerker Sometimes I honestly, just, I honestly think some promoters actually don't give it any consideration. Just pure torture for the athlete. <laughs> Just slop it together. Figure it out. Yep. Look at that. Jeremy's kind of a thought-out guy, though. Yeah. You can tell he's kind of nerdy. You know what I mean? I bet you he's really good in school. Six twenty. And four thirty. We're going to continue to say lane one is on the left, lane two is on the right. It's the opposite. I know it's really the opposite. I think that's that torture part. It is. Yeah. Yeah.
Nice lift. Oh, beautiful. I like that guy. Synchronized. A little, that little Maori, you know, haka thing. You know what I'm talking about? At the end there, he could be, yeah. You ever watch that Blacks team in New Zealand? That, yeah. yeah. Black shirts, I think they call them. Easy pull. See, yeah, yeah, N no problem there. He doesn't have to worry about that chest goal too much on a deadlift. No. He's a strong deadlifter, too. I expect him to be close to 800 pounds. Nice, easy pull at 430. Wow. Cracked it, cracked it, ramp it up. Get under it. Oh, that's a tough one. That's just called seeing stars right there. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get that hit started a little sooner sometimes because you really got to, if you can do that, you can catch your breath. Yeah, 620. I, I just point of reference, 620. I, I still like the bigger jump sooner. Yeah. Yeah, because this could drag out a little bit. Three attempts, though, does generally get it done pretty quick regardless. Yeah. But Got Jen over here about to do a 450. I think Great Lakes did 25-pound jumps last year, didn't they? At the uh, end, maybe George went 20-pound jumps. I can't remember now. Yeah. That's a pretty big pulls going on there, though. Got up pretty quick. If I remember, that would have been uh, two years ago. Was it two years yeah. ago? Oh, two years ago. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Jen has a background here. Like wow, what works. a. Yeah. Girl's got some quads on her, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's got a big powerlifting background. She still trains oh, really? style, but doesn't compete. That much, makes complete so. sense, actually. I think she could have gone for about a 480. I love that. We need more power lifters over in the strongman. It's yeah. more, strongman's way more glamorous. It's like the WWE of lifting. You can be a big personality in this sport. Yeah. We need to showcase those personalities more. I'm a big advocate of that. Oh, sure. George has got a reason why he doesn't do names. Too many people swap shirts. Can't argue. If that's the worst thing he does is don't put yeah. names on the back of a shirt. Okay, that's a fair, fair enough. Maybe just your pro guys. You got to earn that name, you know what I mean? It's hard. Every year I got to find something to pick apart. I got to think of something to pick them apart. But I, I do. You know, I try to make them better. I take all the credit for Six forty on the bar. I think we're going to see that eight hundred. I really do. Lane one, like it was eat, like it's nothing. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe these guys are just warming up. Maybe they're the big pullers. Yeah, right. Nice pull. Yeah, Brandon had that knee. Surgery at yeah. knee right now, but he's happy he can pull. Another big 
That guy's nothing. Yeah, they're they're counting those lifts over there. So these must be a part of that group. Some of those guys are making 450 look really easy. Yeah. Nice pull. There we go. Nice gentle set down. They wouldn't give in powerlifting. You want to know why? Because they would say he had. I've seen that. Left. Yeah. Listen, we're not going to talk about how I feel about judges at powerlifting meets. No, no, let's not. Too much. I usually have something to say. There's such an inconsistency. It's so subjective. It really is. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I'm talking about it now. So you told me oh, I'm yeah, talking no, about it. Talking about yeah. it. No, I mean I've I've yelled at an international judge before. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, easy work. Yeah. Short stature guy like that. Eight fifty yeah. all day long. I like those socks that guy's wearing. Skulls on them. We need this, I think. I'm glad I'm hanging out with you today. You have no problem eating. Oh, man, I love eating. Let's Look go. Let's grind. That was a good attempt. What's that? That was a good attempt. It was a great attempt. The only thing I would do differently is just sit back on it and, and, and hitch that. Try to get it. Yeah, get you're almost up. pulling against your own groove at that point when you're yeah. trying to get over that quad. I think it was uh, Pujanowski who used to oil up his his thighs yeah. so that the bar would just slide right Harry Hairy quads, you don't want those no. when you're trying to hitch, you know. Yeah, I've, I've learned that the hard way. Yeah, shave those damn quads and put some baby oil on them or something, yep. you know. There, now there you go. Picture perfect hitch, absolutely. Yeah, that's a... Re Lovelace hitch if I've ever seen yeah. one. She's the best in the business, by the way. That that girl can hitch better than anybody I've ever seen. And she's worked it into her training yeah. on rep work. It's yeah. just it's unbelievable. It's very well, nice. not only that, she's the biggest deadlifter in the world, pound yeah. for pound. I mean yeah. and I'm not just saying hitching, by the way. As a power lifter, she holds multiple world records. Yeah. But that's learning your craft is what I'm getting at. And yep. that's a big thing in Strongman is to learn how to hitch. There's your strapless. There goes your power lifter, right? Yep. Showing off. Oh, boy, that's tough. That's just falling over the bar a little bit. It's at a really weird starting height. Yeah. There you go. Sit back into it. There you go. There we go. I knew we had it in him for Set sure. Had to get the footing right. So much leg drive when it comes into a deadlift, especially like this. What's that? So much leg drive when it comes into a deadlift, especially like this. You have such a soft, dainty voice today. I can barely hear you. It's very feminine. You must be high in estrogen right now. You're really on that kick, huh? Well, I was there the other day. I told you. Yeah, well. It was terrible. <laughs> nice pull. Easy pull. Got some new faces coming into the groove now. Yeah, First attempt go. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Personality. Show it. Be proud of those lifts. I love that. We need more attitude like that. I bet you that guy will do a haka after his third attempt. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. yeah I just uh, I just hope you're correct on. I believe it's haka. I oh, believe no, it's I just haka. hope you're correct on his ethnicity. <laughs> I, listen, he's the one that made the face. Stuck his tongue out. You know, like I, there, there's a name for that. 
Yeah. Besides sticking your tongue out, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. He did it. Why would I not assume that? I'll ask him. Hey, if he's not, that's not a, a insult by any no, stretch. No, not at all. They are an intense group. They were. I almost feel like those guys went too early. <laughs> 660. Got a lot of guys waiting in the wings. Big numbers coming up. There we go. Nice hitch. Nice hitch. Yep. See, hitch it up one inch at a time. I like it. Uh, the video, somebody's, I don't know. I mean, I'm at 1080 or, or what a high definition. I'm maybe the, we'll try on the next, uh, the next event. I, I, we got pretty good clarity on our end. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we also take donations if you want to buy better equipment. No, listen, I'm not even, it's not even the equipment. Oh, no, it's, I know. It's, it's high def, it's 1080. Yeah. Yeah. I think the... Uh, Check your internet. <laughs> I'm not taking it personally. I'm just saying. Yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Gets glitchy and pixelated. That's why I need to get one of those bird dogs. Don, you got to get me a bird dog. Yeah. I know this, this, the uh, site I use offers that high definition, too, and that's what I'm on, so I don't know yeah. where the breakdown's at. I mean, that focus, I think, was set for this event, or maybe it was yeah. set for the log. Well, same, same location, though. We'll, we'll just, check it out next event. It just gets yeah. a little... A little uh, pixelated is what they're saying. Is, oh, is that what you're seeing? Yeah. Through the feed and, itself? And, yeah. Oh, okay. no, that's what they're commenting. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And gets a little lagging. Let me uh, jump oh, up there. We're just giving you a hard time because it's fun. Yeah, you're yeah, not, no, yeah. We're not, we're not, not yeah, no, it's all good. I'm actually going <laughs> to maybe try to figure this out. We're not looking at the screen half the time, so it's good to hear everybody's feedback. No, it's just it's just because live your typical live stream stuff. All right, we're up to 680. Yep. No. No. We're on the menu. We're now just on the inside menu. What? It's not showing anymore. Let's see. All right, we're going to play around with it. Do I have a video? Nearing 700 pounds. Wait, wait. Call incoming, 680 loaded. Blank right now. There we go. We're back. <laughs> oh, they said it got it got more crisp as we started talking. I lost my feet. See, yeah. try to fix it on the fly. Yeah, it was giving me some problems earlier. Yeah. Six eighty. 
Uh, lost a clip over there on uh, lane one. Couldn't quite crack it in lane two there. Five ten. Six eighty still. All right, six eighty. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> nice, nice. I was hoping he'd get it. Nice work. Love that enthusiasm. Here we go. Nope. You taking a break? No, every time I take it off. Putting your jacket on? Yeah, I know. That sun goes away. It gets cold out here. These athletes are loving it, though. It is a great temperature for a strongman competition. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. If the wind was blowing, it'd be a different story, but it's not. So yeah. 45 degrees kind of works. All right, we got 510 over on the other lane here. 510? Yep. Look at him go. Slow and steady wins the race. Nice pull for sure. I'm not so sure we want slow and steady with the deadlift, but he did it. Good job. Stayed yeah. with it. Yeah. That's just a perfect example of staying with it. I see a lot of guys give that lift up too early. Yeah. Usually You'd be surprised. If that bar's moving, stay on it. Usually if the hips come up too early, it's very hard to save it after that. Jeremy makes some money if he sold some pizza out here. I'm surprised he's not. He's a pretty, pretty good businessman when it comes to making a buck or two. I think uh, it sounds like we're going to get pizza after this. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I mean, I'm just after the whole event. I can't just, wait that I'm... long. <laughs> That's two and a half hours from now. Man, if only they did something like delivery. I bet you they do have delivery. I bet you that's a thing around here. It's college town, you know. Of course, Uber is everywhere. Looks like we're in the 700s. What is it, not left. Uber, DoorDash. Yeah. Let's see who's going to attempt the 700s. 700 in the left lane, is that where we're yeah. waiting on? Okay. 510 still in the right lane. Perfect 700 on the lane. And you can look at those guys behind the bar. There's a few left standing. We're going to oh, see yeah. some big attempts here. I can see a half dozen guys or so that are going to go well over 700. Second attempt's coming up. It does question how big of a jump we're going to see. 700 from a few of these guys. Yeah. I don't see a couple of them even stepping in yet, to be honest with you. I mean, it's full send at this point as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather see a fail at 750 than a butter wow. 700. That was a nice, easy five. Here we go. And we're going up, as, as I expected. See, there we go. Athletes are saying, no, 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 we're good. Let's not do 20-pound jumps now. Let's get up there. Or maybe that was two seven hundred six eighty. No, that can't be right. Were we at six eighty a minute? 
Oh, okay. Seven. Yeah, okay. We're, Maybe we're at 640 or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they just hadn't loaded it yet. Yeah, okay. Corey Loper with the 700. Corey Loper, 700. Okay. All right. That was a good pull. He only had to lift that, like, what, four feet? Well, it's a long pull for that guy for yeah. sure. <laughs> That's like most people's normal deadlift. And that is such an awkward <laughs> starting point at 14 inches. It really is. Yeah. And a big guy like him would appreciate the leverage with a lower pull, I would bet. I mean, he's a 700-pound guy all the time. Ah, here we go. This is my 850 guy today, by the way. Opening at 7. Easy work in lane two. Oh, that was not. Oh, butter. Jeez, now I see oh, why geez. that was his opener. Yeah, I, I see 850 all day long. Yeah. I, I like being right about there. things. I might even put him at 870. I'm just here for these cutoff shorts. You see those? The Daisy Dukes? Yeah, man. Oh. I'm here for it. Our head judge has got a pair of Daisy Dukes on. The best part is, is he's got a, he's he's got got a nice legs. Coat, I show and he's off. got a coat on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta Sometimes you, it's a price to pay for fashion. You got to withstand the weather a little bit. I mean, if you got quads like that, show them off. This is taking a weird turn. I don't actually don't even think it's fair this guy pulls. I mean, he's a pretty short guy. It's like a, it's like an 18 inch deadlift like Corey Loper. Looks like 720 is what we're at. Great advantage in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not knocking him. Just saying. Easy pull, jeez, old Pete's. Strong guy. This is my favorite guy that's a master that's not a master. Yeah. I think I've been calling him a master all day, but he's not. He only looks old with the gray beard. I like the gray and the red. You see that on that guy? Yeah. 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 It's what I get whenever I hang out with you. <laughs> Good one. Nice pull. Nice pull. Look at that. Samuel Clapper. 5.30 over on the right lane. 5.30 in lane two. Yeah. Easy work for a lot of those guys. I think some of these guys are saying, you know what? I'm going to play it easy on this one because I'm going to throw some weight over bar and really take advantage. Posterior chain in like full effect. A whole competition takes a lot of strategy. Like, how much energy do you want to use on what events what do you want to conserve there's some strategy that goes into it i mean there is i hate to admit it because i'd like to see guys just full yeah. send every event but yeah. there is some strategy but like you know when you get to, if, if the fifth event is the one that you're really looking for you know might be good just to keep doing that consistent points game absolutely and then just yeah. go crazy on that last yeah. one and i don't object to the guy who just wants to come out and showcase one event yeah come out and you know be that guy 750. 750. Wow. <laughs> now we're seeing the big jumps all of a sudden. This looks like. Confident pullers. Yeah. Looks like this will be Corey's yeah. third attempt, I believe. Corey might struggle with this a little bit. That 700 came up a little rough at the starting point. We'll see. I'm not rooting against him. I'm just, uh, you know. Again, you know, that power bar really changes up a few things there. Coming off of being sick too. There's, there's a. Yeah. That's not an easy thing to do. Is make it through a competition. Coming off of a, a chest cold. Yeah, he's. Yeah, that's a tough. That's a tough yeah. height, guy. Oh, he's gonna keep going though. 
If he can just crack it to his knee, I think he's there. Yeah. Got about three inches of like no man's land to play with. Yeah, that's okay, Corey. He did break the ground with it. What's that? He did get it off the ground. He cracked it. He cracked it. Yeah, it's at such an odd height for a tall guy. 14 inches is no man's land. What is the, uh, what is the normal height of a bar at a, sitting on a plate, 11 inches? I should know I, this. Yeah. I, I thought it was eight. Is it eight? Is it I that thought, low? I it was like oh, eight it, it, you're right. It is. Yeah. It's, it might it's be like eight time. and a half, something like that. Yeah. So five inches onto that. Yeah. And. And 18 for most guys is two inches below the knee on an average height guy. Yeah. Which is a sweet spot for a lot of guys. Yeah. But even for a guy like Corey or tall guys like Jake, yeah. 18 is not even fun. There you go. Nice pull there, 540. Some PR is going down today. Clapper, nice pull. 7 Very impressive. We're at 550 over on the right. Bellows is just hanging out. I know what he's thinking right now. Do I skip 750 and just go right to 800? I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. <laughs> Or do you? That's the thing is, you know. And you, and you miss 800 by some fluky thing? Or, you got three guys that beat you at 750? Or you might pull back some of that weight and just conserve he, it. And he wants a title here today. Battle of Asgard to him. That's win for him in his mind right now. Yeah. He's, we'll get some standing updates for you guys here maybe uh, after this event if we can. We'll, we'll get some standings. I think the last two yeah. events yeah. are going to be the uh, – 550 for the big presser. The stone shoulder is going to be really the. It's going to be an interesting one. It's that's going to be one, entertaining. It, that's like a chance type of con competition. You know, there. you can get a guy that has, you know, shit the bed in the other three events, yeah. pull off a big event. Yeah. That. That's such an oddity. Yeah. That could flip the standings on a lot of guys. Yeah. You got three or four guys that break it up with a good load and, and time. Yeah. That's a wild card for sure. Looks like we're let's see here. What kind of jump did he make? 780 maybe? 770. Okay. That's I'd say that's a good second attempt jump. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He's a big puller. I think he came in a little soon. I may have came in right here if I was there. I mean, or he might just be playing it safe and just knows he's gonna yeah, get I it. mean maybe he's looking at the standings right now. Yeah, yeah don't let's not mess it up. I'll talk to him between events. Find out where his head's at. What's his thinking? I bet you he just eats this up, though. That's my point. Because I think Clapper's capable here, too, but that'll be Clapper's third. Look at that. Yeah, no problem. I think that was a good jump. I think that was just right for that second. All right, well, look at here. We're not going backward. Yeah, they're going to 770. Rimbowski, yeah, so, you know, he's going to go 770. Third attempt, by the way. Bells will be the only guy with third attempt left. Take the win. Take the win. Yeah. Okay, I see what we, I see what we got going on Kinda here. It just comes down to right here. Yep. It's third attempt here. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. 
Did you just fart? I think you just farted, didn't you? Smell it from over, all the way over here. Oh, you know, it's actually going against the wind. Yeah, I know, right? It's yeah. impressive. Wow. Physics are weird. It's that McDonald's we had. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> can you really pinpoint it? What's floating around your intestines right now? Honestly, I don't think you can. Oh, wait. We did have Speedway. <laughs> that was your Speedway <laughs> breakfast <laughs> sandwiches. This is what it was. <laughs> those are death trap right Pretty there. sure those aren't even considered food. I'm pretty sure it's just like yoga mat. Right here we go. Cracked it. There he goes. All right. Nice work. All right. All right. Interesting. Is Clapper going to do 770? He's going to do 790. 10 pound jumps probably aren't allowed. Or did, or did Clapper already pull three times? I'm not sure. I don't think he did. No, he must have. Bellows is coming in now. Yeah. All you guys. Eight hundred. Why not make it a clean eight hundred pounds? There we go. Yep, eight hundred. So a thirty pound jump. Well, take the win. I think he's capable of eight fifty. Yeah. I thought but he again, made seven seventy. But he, why would you do it? There's no right, reason. Yeah. I get it. I All get you got to do is just. That's just what the fans want to see. That's what I want to see. Yeah. But sometimes you, you're you not going to sacrifice the competition for a PR. Conserve that energy, get through the rest of the events. 800 Third event, anything can happen. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Nice. Whoa. I like it. I'm not the only guy that swore today. I'm just saying. There's a lot of enthusiasm behind that yeah. pull. I wonder if that is my long lost son. All right. Here we go. 800 on the bar. Rolling start. It's kind of my style. I like it. Look at that. Nice work. Yeah. Never a Smart. doubt. Never a doubt. Smart way. Just take the win. That's a nice win for him. Yeah. yeah. Good event win. I believe he's uh, up there in the log press as well. I put him at the top right now. I think he's probably first place. I'm in, I, you know, I'm, I'm impartial to the super heavyweight guys. You know, I just, I am. I, I admit it. I have love for the super heavyweights. I mean, they are the best looking bunch, generally. Let's see here. We've got a Still 580 up. in the left. This is our men's novice division going over there. I'm sure. I, I don't. Why does it matter, right? I, it, are we keeping them all on one side? Is that what I'm, I'm looking at? I don't know why we're so behind in one bar. I don't get it. There you go. Stay with it. There you go. Nice pull. Staying with it. Three hours and 33 minutes into this live stream. Just a drop in the bucket. I did mention I hold the world record in strongman live streaming in a single day.
Panda and I do actually 12 straight hours of strongman slash CrossFit commentating. Uh, we lost our minds after eight hours, by the way. You think I ramble now? At the eight hour point, I was incoherent. I don't even know what I was talking about. Well, that's not really anything new. Maybe a lift or two left and a little break. A little snack break. A little pizza break. I'm thinking, man. I need something hearty going on here. I'm too much. All right. Still got fitty on this bar. Easy work. I think a lot of these guys some weight on the table today. Well, if times you go on plan and then the plan changes. Yeah, I think the novice guys are battling it out. A few of them are. Although we did have a couple of novice on the beer bar. Yeah. One, by the way. Well, I, I'm pretty sure you were a novice twice. Yeah, and I'm going for a third. <laughs> okay. I think that's breaking the rules of. Although no, I think it's a no. rule. You're or if you win, right? Yeah. Podium, if, you can't do novice yeah. again. If you place, you can't. As far as I'm concerned, you do novice once. You never. I don't care if you're last place. You're not a novice anymore. But anyhow, that's debatable on another day. Some of us just take very long breaks in between competing. <laughs> Right, maybe a two-year break or something. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm going I don't on know. about a year and a half. You do a strongman show, I give you your man card. You do novice twice, I take it away. What if I do it for a third time? You just like give me a half one back. Well, I think there. I think actually there might be a new uh, event category for transitioning men. Just saying. I'm just trying to be politically correct by saying that. I'm not knocking it in any way. You can be the first. I'm just still just a novice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be a novice in that class is what I'm saying. Nah. I'm sure I'll get in trouble for that by somebody who will get mad at me for not being. All right, we still have five. Woke enough. Nothing. Five eighty. Let's see this. Roll it in. Easy pull. Yes. With a slam wobbly, it down. With a wobbly. You're disqualified. Wheel. I'm kidding. Yeah. That's attitude. I like that attitude. You gotta. You're not gonna bend those bars. You guys gotta, you gotta lift. Although the bar looks kind of bent from here. Josh Volker. No Volkers. straps. All chalk. Ooh. Boy, you got that started really nice. Got long legs, that guy. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to ask. He's staying with it, though. One more try. Yeah, it's it's hard to generate that yeah. that power at that point. I got actually I got my money on this guy right now. I've watched him. Blakely is a good puller. 
Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, no problem. Way too quick. <laughs> yeah. Slow it down next time. I'm kidding. Kidding. Hey, I mean, he's making his name known. Nice pull. There you go. Really good presser. So we're at 590 on this. Yeah, we're maxing out. We're going to watch these other plates come on soon, sadly, which is going to hold us up again for another 10 minutes before lunch. I see the snowballing again. It must not be 40. Yeah. Oh, it's going to fall off. Six. They don't even need to pull it right now. That left, that wagon wheel looks pretty crooked to me. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. They're noticing it. Yeah, they Natural field stones coming to the platform. They look painful. Those are nice little face smackers. Excuse me, that was a yawn. Here we go, get my blood pumping again. That doesn't look good at all. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Yep, there it is. All right, good pull, good pull. Here come the calibrated plates. Jeremy's taking charge. I mean, that's it's a nice, easy way to. This is when your volunteers start getting sleepy. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice, easy way to unload the bar. It's just let the motor comes fall. in. Yeah, it's an easier. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a little crooked. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I think we got one more pull left. I think that's kind of maybe one, two, three guys.
Fort Murray with six hundred pounds on the board. Oh, yeah, it's tough to crack. It's getting long. This event's dragging out. These guys are having a hard time oh, staying warm, I imagine. Look nice job. That. Good job. Look at that save. Had to reignite. Nice pull. Very impressive. I recover like that and make a good and solid pull. Not an easy thing to do. No, I mean, it takes a lot of energy just to start it and then uh, come back and do it again, and get the full pull. That's impressive. Yeah, that's keeping the adrenaline high. That's for sure. He's getting a make-out session from his girl in the back. Oh, he's a happy man. Alrighty. Easy work. I like what I'm seeing. Light and tap, 600 pounds. And one more pull, right? Is that where we're at? 620 win? Okay. Natural stone ladder will move pretty quick. I, I, I think it will. We're not moving any weight around. It's, it is what it is. Bear with us. And if you're not with us currently, it just means you know the live stream is being recorded. You can check it out, Gym Life Podcast, anytime you want on YouTube. Let everybody know. Joe is back, baby. We got 620 here. There you go. Ramp it up. Get the lift for the win. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. What's his name? Blake Lively? That's not true. It's not Blake Lively. I think that's a movie star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's lively, though, I think. Novice men, I think. Six twenty for the win. Nice. That just right on, right on. You got a little strain in the hand there, maybe. That's painful, but he got the job done. Taking a long walk to make sure he's able to hold it together. You can't find his name? Hang on. There we go, Brett. Brett Lively. Blakely. Oh, I was going to say Blake Lively is much better looking than Brett Lively. Brett's a better deadlifter, though. Well, also, his, his name's Blakely. Brett, Lively? Brett Brakely. Brakely? That's Brakely? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was live. right there. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Name's on the back of shirts. George. There you go. Not Blake Lively. It's Brett. La Brett. What is his last name? Bakley? Blakely. Blakely. Gotcha. All right. One more pull. 640 for the win. Every time you think it's over, they keep giving us more.
Yeah, I think he hurt his arm pretty good there. Strained it. Left arm. A couple pullers ago. Yeah. Redheaded guy. I don't know his name because his shirt's not on. Oh, it's getting cold out here right now. All right, 640 for the win, I believe. Nice work. Nice work. Very nice pull. It's a lightweight guy, too. Probably 210-ish. Do we have another puller? This is the event that just keeps on giving. Six forty for the tie. Yeah, two more lifters, I think. Even Jeremy's going, okay, boys. Let's get this going. Here goes the promoter in the back. Green glasses, everybody. Hard to miss them, but oh, checking on our guy got injured. Interesting. I'm going to find out what that injury is. A, a strain, I guess, maybe in the tendon yeah. there. That strap sometimes will dig into you. Yeah. It's his left hand. He still might be able to get the job done and wait over a bar. I mean, unless he's left handed. Stones, those field stones are, are tough. Although he'd shoulder loaded to the right, so maybe. All right, let's see here. 640 for the tie. Cracked it. No, no, one more time. One more time. You got time. You got time. You got time. Oh, oh man. He cracked the other side that time. Pulled together for one. That's okay. Nice attempt. A lot of guys would have bailed on that first one. Respect. Oh, those stones look painful. Oh, Lord. For those of you sticking with the broadcast, uh, this is going to be entertaining. These natural stones to shoulder are no joke. Very, very awkward, painful. Piece of that to the shoulder. Oh. It's, yeah, it, it just looks painful. Yep, no envy here at all. My back hurts watching it. Well, it's it's such a hard event to train for because again, no two stones are alike. Guys, all grit, love, love it, all grit. Oh, get it, man. Nice try. Yeah, nice try. That's uh, the hardest strongman right there, um, you know, exemplified, truly is. Many of these guys, as they get better at this stuff, always work through injury and discomfort and pain. That separates every this sport from every other sport, hands down. Oh, we're still going. And oh, by the way, they, the reward, nothing, yeah. nothing but the fact that they did it, that's it. Do we have one more lifter? We do. Yeah, they just went up. 640? That's where we're at. I don't know what they just went up to. Oh, okay. Well, they would have did another 
Yeah, 20 pounds, maybe 660. Whew, the event that keeps on giving. Cody, I am hungry. I am thirsty. I mean, I see the way you're I'm looking cold. at me. I'm cold. I'm a little tired. I'll slap you around with some smelling salts. My back so this announcing is making my back sore. Nice lift for the tie. Is that it? No, it's not. It's not it. We're good. I think that's it. We are done. Event concluded, at least the this event. Next event is the natural stone to shoulder. I'm going to be ready to commentate that with a little enthusiasm because it is painful and much respect to these guys.
All right, we're back. Stone to shoulder, natural stone to shoulder. This this event kind of sucks. It's not easy. It hurts. So it's a stone ladder, so they got to do both of these as fast as they can. Yeah, that's right. Fast as they can, their time. Shoulder, stone has to be squarely on top of the shoulder with alternate hand out, balanced, in yep. control. Got to start with the hands off of the stone, and then now they have the time, the ability to shift the stone around. But look at that. Like, Oh, it's painful. That hurts. Ow. Ow. Got to pop them hips up. Jagged. He's trying to get that squarely on his shoulder. There's one fall. We're going to see a few of those today. Yeah. Hopefully nobody's underneath the stone. It is a difficult event. Yeah, it's it really is. It's something you can't really train for. You can do your best. And you that's can train with Atlas stones, but they're they're round. They're, <laughs> and they don't hurt. I mean, unless if you train at the gym, that's putting it on. It's it's difficult. Well, this event should move a little smoother. We've only got a few stones, uh, two. We're not switching them out that often. Yeah. One attempt and you're done. I'm not, that was a close one in my opinion. I, I thought it was a little heavy on the front for him. I didn't think I'd square it up on his shoulder. A little leniency from the Look judges. Generally, your face is help, helps balance. Yeah. You don't really want to balance. That, that hurt. Oh, that was a pointy shot, part of the rock in the yep. face. Right on the face, right on the ear. When it's cold out like this, you don't feel it at first until after you're done, and then that... You just start to feel it all at yeah. once. <laughs> yeah, I just jumped right into it, Joe. Like, hey, we're back. Well, wake up. Yeah, do like a little 30-second warning, little bell, something to let people know we're coming back. I like that, Joe. That's a good idea, actually. Oh, that looks painful. Ouch. That's kind of smart. He's already shifting it around ahead of time. Well, there's a, there's a certain learning curve here. The yeah. guys that go first are generally teaching everybody else yeah. how not to do it. I never like being first one up. And generally, nice you were because you were last. Last generally goes first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that flat side right there, you're going to roll that up. So I see what he's doing. Yeah. Point to chest, roll up to flat. Or, you boy. Ow. So that's the difference between these and like sandbags. With sandbags, you know, it can just kind of warp around your arm. You this can kind one, of jump it up a few. Yeah. You're not jumping up that stone. No, and, and it's one side's gonna be a little bit heavier than the other. It's gonna kind of fall forward. Yeah. What we're referring to is that a sandbag. You, you, these guys will load a sandbag. It's it's awkward. It's uh, it's oblong, but it's soft, yeah. and you can kind of jump it up in increments to get it to load on your shoulder flat. You don't have the courtesy or luxury of that with the stone. It, it's just too jagged <laughs> you got about one or two jumps and, up before the pain will and the weight is just kind of distributed. You to stop, yeah yeah and the weight's distributed weird like in different spots one spot is a little bit heavier than the other so if you get it just right it can fall forward can fall back shit show basically guys is what we're yeah. looking at it, it, there's really no rhyme or reason to this it's just fun it's fun to watch that's for sure Ah, the the round stone, so that, nice. That first stone is nice and easy for most it's people. It's almost not fair the first stone is so easy. Yeah. You, yeah. Look at Ooh, that. Oh, wow, sweet. 
Nice technique there. That was about as perfect as you can get. He with probably this. works out at this gym. He's probably used yeah, that right? stone 30 times. He provided the, the stones. <laughs> yeah. I got the perfect stone for competition. I load it all the time. Yeah, is he a farm boy? Yeah, we're, we're hearing from the crowd. He's, he works on a farm. That makes complete sense. Ladies in the right lane. Nice stone load to shoulder there. Is it just a single stone? No, two no, of them. Two, okay, yeah. all right. Ladies are blasting through it. They kind of well. were easy on the ladies here. Look how soft those stones look and rounded edges. There's nothing jagged about those ladies' stones right now. Ladies, come on now. I'm this sure all those one, ladies would rather have a jagged stone. This is where the, the uh, grip shirt will actually kind of not work in your favor. It, it can get stuck on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get stuck. It won't roll quite as well. So yeah, so this first stone's 150, and then that second one's a 200. Okay, and then we're going up to a 250 stone, by the way. Uh, maybe more? Oh yes, 300 stone. Yeah, it's so awkward because they're so compact. Good. Yeah, you're almost better off when the guy loaded it. It was almost a one motion. He just yeah. went right up to it. Just that Viper. <laughs> yeah, like a side pick almost. Yeah. yeah. Or the way he would hold the stone more long to his body than, yeah, I think that's yeah. what he did. I'll look back on uh, the it film. It looks like we're moving up to some heavier ones. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Well, that one looks less painful than the other one. Right. Stones are interesting because they're very bicep heavy also. And there's Jeremy just kind of showing off. Well, that stone weighs 25 no, pounds, too. No warm-up, no belt, no straps, no grip shirt. Just taking it for a walk. I've skipped stones bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> nice load there in the right lane. Nice, nice. Wonderful. I take that back about the lady stones. That stone looks that rough. One, well, yeah, the, the one they just swapped out. I think they're both the same weight, but different shape is going to make a huge difference there. Ooh, wow, Ooh. that was a collarbone breaker there. Ooh. Lots of good brute strength on that one, though. 
But see, this is what I'm talking about, where one side is going to be a little bit heavier. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Weight's not equally distributed. Yeah. Yes, you're right about that. Nice load, though. <laughs> that moment where they put their hand out is like the most painful this, moment of all. The scariest moment. Why yeah. am I enjoying this so much? Probably because I'm not doing it. Because we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Jen over here on the side on the other lane. These girls are really impressive today. There's yeah. a group of ladies yeah. here that has little disparity between them. They're all very, very good. Jen's one of my favorites. I mean, I've been I've competed with her a few times, and she just puts her all into it. Very consistent early morning training for her. Just rolled that right up the body. Look at that. Insanely fast. Very nice. Very nice. So fast. I think that's your leader right now with the ladies. You know, I like the idea of that stone going first now. Look how many guys are loading it. Yeah. I, they, weren't, they weren't coddled with that first round stone. difficult part about a stone like that is that it's smooth and it just kind of wants to roll. You can't really get your fingertips to grip onto something. The grip is an issue. Probably not as bad as you would think. Oh, they didn't get If back. you can find your spot. So over here on the left, that was a no rep. Too quick. Just wasn't balanced enough. Nice. He's impressive. Blakely said his name a lot today. Yeah. Of course, I called him Blake Lively. Brandon Moore's done a few competitions. Yeah, the sweatshirt's nice. I think I would wear a big, thick sweatshirt. Yeah. Some guys are opting to start the stone off of the pad. Not a bad move, actually. Ooh, the hop-up method. That worked. Good job. Man, you can just hear the weight of those stones when they hit those pads, though. Look how long that thing is. Yeah, no surprise. He's done a few competitions. Yeah. He, he's took cues from the first several guys that went up there. Yeah. A lot of those guys now are loading that stone long ways. Yeah. The weights of the stones are uh, 150 and 200. Uh, no, they're uh, two, uh, 200 and 250 Oh, now. 200 and 250. And then on the uh, the lane to the right is 150 and 150. Okay. All right, gotcha. And I think for the Supers, we're, ha we're adding a 300, so it's yeah. going to go from 250 to 300. And again, natural stones are... Not the same as Atlas stones. Like there is a, there's a difference there. Well, weight is weight, but they're definitely different when it yeah. comes to loading. That's a fact. I was I was never really the best shoulder loader with anything, even sandbags. I, yeah. Some guys have a knack for it for sure. Yeah. That was one of my favorites with the sandbags. I haven't done a stone yet, a natural stone, I should say. Hopefully, you never will. No, no, it looks kind of fun. Well, after we're done here, we'll film you. We'll, we'll yeah, see there we you. go. Just film me collapsing. 
crumpling. Going for that one motion there. Oh, yeah, ouch. See? Looking at the, I don't know if you guys got a clear view of the right lane. You don't. I might move those judges aside there. Let's see what I can do to help these uh, spectators out. Stones like this are just a huge struggle. Rolls right out of the fingers. If you want to see how fat Joe is, there he is right up front. About to go up to the, yeah, here we are switching out 250 to 300. Okay, we're getting a little more of uh, a view there. Yeah. That was a fast of the 150, 150. It's almost pizza time. First guy in a tank top, he wins. Yeah. Well, if, kind of. If Nick O'Hara was out here, he'd be shirtless already. He cut the sleeves off his. No, uh, that is true. Of his grip shirt. True. A lot of these guys are gonna have uh, next next few days. Look at that, just single motion from the bottom to the top. Uh, easy work. That was nothing. He almost like picked it up and just set it on his shoulder. I like this guy. This guy, a lot of grit. This is the 300 pound stone here, and can't even be like. Well, the pick is the tough part on this one. Yeah. If these guys can lap it, they got a chance. Yeah. This is a smoother one, too, so. Just trying to get that grip on there is going to be a nightmare. His shoulder is all cut up from that last one. Oh yeah, that's true. I think uh, I think I would lap it where it's at right now. I wouldn't get too creative with it. Find two good grip points and just lap it. Roll it on those knees and get it up there. That grip point. And I would probably take advantage of that mat, get that stone to the edge of it, and really slide my hands underneath of it. Oh, you know Nick would be shirtless too. And it's cold out here. He'd be like all jacked up and tight. He'd probably put like some oil on or something. This is just an absurd amount of weight. That 300 pounder? The 300 pounder, yeah. That's just. 
250 is, is an absurd amount of weight for a stone like this. I mean, a regular stone to shoulder at 300 is a tough stone. Yeah. Jason, I talked about you earlier in the live stream. What was that? You won a big show recently, didn't you? What was that? Was that America's Strongest Man or something? I see an A7 grip shirt. That's a that's a powerlifting thing there. Oh, he's disqualified. You can't yeah, use right? those. Yeah. Get him out. Yeah, this is one of those where, like, if you drop it, do you try to save it or do you just get out of the way? I think run. Yeah, I think you back up quickly. Yeah. If the point of that stone came down the wrong yeah. way. Well, that's the nice thing about the bigger ones is they don't bounce and roll as far as these smaller ones are. Okay, I'm going to go get our pizza. You going to hold down the fort? I'll hold down the fort. All right, sorry, kidding. guys. You're he, not going to really be thoroughly entertained, but he'll entertain you nonetheless. I'm just going to talk shit about you. There's just no easy way to do this. Just getting it off the ground is already impressive. This is not an event I would want to do with glasses on. All right. Well, that 250 just went right up. And an impressive work with that 300. That's faster than some of the 150s. Look at that, just tossed it right up like it was a bag of mulch. Like it was nothing. All right, we got the 250 going on to the 300. Got 300, and then the 150 goes. You can see how big this stone is just right there.
this is one of those where you can't really like look at someone and tell who's going to be good at this and who's going to struggle. Nice roll right there. thing is trying to find the right spot to distribute that weight just right. There we go. 150 on the side there. Look at the way that that just went right up. Good, nice and fast. So the thing is, just trying to figure out what's the right placement. A 250 went up real fast, though. Just to think, like, 250 pounds are just compacted right there into an awkward shape. Trying to just keep it in fingers without it rolling. Oh, hell yeah. Pizza, pizza. And Joe's back with some pizza. I'm going to slam a piece, and you can slam a piece. Then I'll slam a piece, and you can slam a piece. Are you the piece? So anyways, it's some things you say, I just I have a hard time look digesting. This. Look at this. Stones. There we go. Struggled on that first one, but that second one just went right up. Nice little hip pop up there.
What a thing to go from a 250 into a 300. Like you just lifted 250 pounds 10 seconds ago. <laughs> there we go. He's got to balance it at the end there, and we're good. That clapper's impressive. We made up a lot of time in this event. Went very quick. Yeah. And to think they can't, they can't use gloves, which that would make a huge difference. Oh man, just toss that up there like it was. Like I almost pounds. wouldn't object to gloves in a natural stone load. There we go. Wow. Yeah. That was insane. He's having his moments today. I know he's coming off of being a little sick, but he'll be ready for a good season this year. Yeah, Jason, that's right. Congratulations. Um, Jason Bonet, America's Strongest Man Masters, 50-plus middleweight. I don't think I ever congratulated you on that or ran into you since you did that. So here's your congrats, brother. That's awesome. All right, end of uh, stones, and we're on to weight over bar, uh, which I think are 56, 28, and 42. And I will get that information to you. It's going to be fun to watch.
uh, left missed a few times. Yep. All right, getting ready to start this weight over bar, the WOB, as they call it in Highland Games. And uh, it's good to see it here in uh, Strongman, officially with the weight, that being the weight on the chain. Uh, you see this event a lot with kegs over bar, and you might see uh, height with kegs or height with sandbags. Um, in this particular case, we're using an actual Highland Games implement, and this is weight over bar. W-O-B, WOB. I believe uh, probably going to stick with 56, and uh, they're using a Masters 41 on that for you here in just a second. So yeah, 42 pounds, uh, 56 pounds will be utilized by the uh, middleweights and the heavyweights, 42 pounds by the masters, uh, and the middle, or excuse me, novice men, and then we'll use the 28 pounds. Uh, and the 14 pound weight. So uh, yeah, we'll see some good throwing here, I hope. Some naturals at this when it comes to a Highland Games throw. Harder than it seems. You know, that releases everything. Triple extension, you'll hear me say that a lot because when it comes to this particular event, you have to triple extend, which is arm up, hips through, on your toes, releasing at the highest point, and that little backflip as well. You know, you want to be as close to the bar as you can, uh, trying to get the weight to cross the bar at its highest point. We're the release comes a little short or the release comes a little long, uh, which in the top point uh, on your release, trying to make sure that weight crosses the bar at the highest point. And then we'll see some good throws, I hope. I'm... I'm guessing. I don't know who's going to start at six feet. I think it's going to be a two throw per height situation. Come in where you can come in. Which for a lot of these guys, I'm not sure they know what height that is. So we might see a little less strategy here. And guys just kind of coming in to feel comfortable to get one over. Then maybe a lot of throws. I, I, let me get the rules on this for you guys. Can you check that out, Cody, exactly what the rules are on this? if you want to jump in. That seems like a lot of throwing otherwise. That's what the rules said. I don't know if they changed it. Oh, we'll see. Two attempts per right. We'll find out the particulars on Yeah, Jason, it's good to be back, man. Some life stuff for a few months and uh, back in it full swing now and starting the show back up. And, uh, yeah, anyhow, things have all... Got worked out on my end of things on a personal level, and now I'm back ready to have some fun with all you guys and start, fire the show back up. A little more diverse content, a little more broader uh, topic range than before, but much much to do with uh, uh, lifting, strength, sports, core, strongman. Maybe not so much bodybuilding and that kind of thing. Functional stuff. Masters can appreciate that. Naturopathic ways of, of dealing with competition and life. And, of course, getting a lot of these great athletes to share their time with me as well, like I did last time. If you guys haven't checked out a lot of my podcasts, they're on the Gym Life podcast, of course. And a lot of great athletes, a lot of fun times and great interviews and fun competitions. And, anyhow, there's all kinds of good stuff there. Looking forward to getting back at it. So the 16 is going to be a bag, apparently. And six foot probably won't be the height. I see no point behind that. Yeah, we should just move the bar up to 10, I'm thinking. Hmm. Okay, it's a throw after at every height after you come in, which, which I don't know if that either but anyhow, we'll get to the bottom of it. Okay. 
Yeah, we're uh, done the last set right now, so it's... This might take a while. <laughs> Thinking. If they miss it, they can't come back. The last, the last time At two attempts, though. They get two attempts per height. Yeah. They've yeah. done two okay. other events, so... Hey, uh... Is there any beer Okay, there? six is the number. That was close. I think we'll start mixing around here. It's six. It's two attempts per height. Uh, guys can jump in when they want to jump in. Uh, maybe they're just going through the women first. Okay. I don't know if the other weights will actually jump in. Albeit they should, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. All right, bar up to eight feet. Nice little setup, really, with the PVC like that. Not bad. Well thought out. Let's see how the hell am I supposed to take a picture of this? I'll have to be in over there. Towards the street. <laughs> All right, let's get this moving now. We're all anxiously waiting. Easy work. I'll jump in here soon enough. I'm going to let this kind of run for a bit. I don't want to get talking too soon. I run out of things to say about this. Wait till the bar gets up there, then we'll uh, have a little more fun with it.
Still watching grass growing out here, guys. We're getting to it. We're up to a 28-pound weight, though, so we're Masters Women Open Women, I think. We're getting there. A lot of guys are going to the gym warming up. Before you know it, this will really be flying by, especially when these guys get this heavy weight out. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to throw a 56-pound weight behind your head over a bar, as you can see even with this 28 for some of these women. All in all, a really good day out here. At, uh, at the, uh, what are we called again? This is the um, Battle of Asgard, yes. Here in Portage, Kalamazoo area. Raw strength, uh, Jeremy Mulcher's facility and his promotion. He's uh, been at this now his third year in a row and He's got another uh, contest coming up in August we're going to be a part of as well and live streaming that for him. Uh, I'll be up at uh, Great Lakes and doing something up there with George and uh, trying to get some content and do that kind of stuff like I do every year up there. And I think Battle at the Beach, Harbor Beach with uh, Nick O'Hare. July 13th, 14th, right around there, right? 13th, okay. Saturday, whatever that Saturday is. First year I haven't been vacationing when he's throwing it, so I will be there for sure. Who knows? Maybe I'll talk to Nick, see if he wants to throw a camera on it and live stream the athletes out there for you guys this year. 42-pound weight. This would be a master's weight in Highland Games. Sometimes. It just depends what the promoter wants to do. But ultimately, I've seen 42. I've seen 56 multiple times. I prefer the 42. <laughs> That's the uh, perks of being a master. I think that's what, a 10 foot right now? Where are we at height wise? Maybe not 10. That doesn't look 10 to me. 8, 15, what's the difference? Ended up being kind of a cold day today, but at least it did. Didn't uh, uh, snow or rain? Well, well, snow just a just a couple flurries to remind you that you're in Michigan and that staying pretty bundled up today. No injuries, significantly to speak of. Some bumps and bruises. I think we'll get out of this event in pretty good shape as well. Yeah, should be no problem. I, I'm guessing a 15 foot height is where I'd like to see these guys at with this 42 pounds. I think a lot of them can get there. 56 will be another story. I think uh, you'll see a lot of guys, you know, hit that 10 foot, 11 foot mark, and you'll see them starting to drop. A lot of tech. I want to reach back on it. You want to let that weight work up to the bar. You don't want to start pulling on it too high because that actually slows the weight down. There's a lot of leg drive involved in this. Real deep back between the legs. A lot of these guys are gonna muscle it over and do a pretty good job of that as well. If you're not training this consistently, you're not tangibles of, of the movement itself, the basic movement between the legs kind of come through. Everybody's kind of, I guess you can say, throwing something behind them overhead at one point in their lives. It's kind of what we're doing here today. We want to see that hand and that weight release higher. So you think about raising your hand above your head and letting go of it. But at that point, a lot of these guys are what we call short arming it, where they're going to come through and kind of release it almost at eye level. And the better guys, but one of the guys that probably win this event is the one that you know works on that triple extension, gets real high with that hand and comes up on his toes.
and still perfect so far at the first place. 42 pounds is their weight. Looks like a guy that was comfortable with that, throwing it with a hand in the pocket. I and if the hands in the pocket is well enough, but otherwise you kind of place it on, on the partially inside of your thigh uh, of the alternate leg, or the 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 thigh on the same side as your free hand. It's the ideal spot for it. Almost like you're pushing off that like a heavy squat up. That hand is kind of an assist point. I think a fair number of guys might opt out on this height. All right, we're going to come back here in just a minute. We'll let these guys make a couple throws at the shorter heights. We'll get them more excited than we are right now.
we're still here. I'm sure you don't need me yapping through this whole thing, but as we get a little higher and we'll keep following up with you guys and uh, we'll make a good push to the end and hopefully we'll see some big throws and some high heights. Uh, we're in the novice men here. They're throwing the 42-pound lob. Uh, it's weight over bar. I think we're at currently 10 feet. I, I will but anticipate is getting up to close to 15 for a lot of these guys. Um, maybe drop a few out next couple feet here. Uh, we're going to see a pretty uh, strong competition push to the end with more than a handful of guys.
All right, we're at 12 feet now. We're about two feet, two feet away from getting exciting, I think. So we will uh, come back then.
All right, the silence is over. 12 feet. We're finally to 12. I, I thought this would be our breaking point for a lot of these guys. Only because a lot of guys you're kind of witnessing have a not familiar with every single one of them go over 12 with 42 pounds. Just just little tweaks. But as we're going to see here today, it's going to clear out pretty quick here. 12 up. Uh, to your side body, you only want, want to start it there once. I wouldn't start between my legs. I would side body start. There, uh, didn't quite get there. The, between the legs to pick speed up between your legs. So, you, you know, you're kind of coming through your legs a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper than a release. That's different techniques for everybody, but that's generally what you're going to see on the third swing. There you go. So a lot of power. Uh, he reached his highest point behind the bar, so you'll you'll see that uh, you know, if you feel like looking back at it. So, you know, a, a release, that just means he released it behind him. He wants to release more straight up and down. A little close to the bar. I'd take a step out. All these guys are going to have to look for that high point now to, to come right at that bar. I might even move out just a little bit more, but that's about, I guess that's a little further than last time. There he goes. Yeah, see, you high pointed it right where he needed to be. Took that little half step forward. Perfect. Again, side leg start. Okay, between the legs, one. Between the legs, a little deeper, two. Pull through. And just, just short armed it. Let go of it too soon. You want that hand to carry over the head with the weight and release without pulling through because if that weight gets above waist high and you start pulling through you're actually pulling the weight towards you and it's going to take the momentum out of the weight as it's going up really basic physics so release at the highest point The guy's just coasting through. I think he's done this before. Yeah, not a lot of leg drive. He's standing up with the weight before the weight's actually coming through. So he's losing all that momentum on the weight. Just one time. Yeah, I just like to see him go through his middle of his legs a couple times, get that momentum, and get down on the weight a little bit. Yeah, deadlift shoes, maybe not. One, get a little deeper though. I nah, didn't need to go side there. Just down one. Yeah, just get some momentum. Start side, go through the legs two or three times although i've seen some guys start side go through the legs once but they're getting back further because that side that side start so that momentum is allowing that weight to travel back through their legs farther Yeah, just a practice thing. You're not just bending at the waist when you come through your legs either. You're really trying to bend at the knees so you can get that explosion through the legs, through the weight. So there's a lot of moving parts. That'll just add a lot more momentum to that. Like, again, these guys would have no problem six weeks from now reaching 12 feet. 
But that is the uh, that is the wild card of the sport. You can't train everything, or at least when you think you have, there's something else you missed. Yeah, definitely an outside thing, unless you did a sandbag. Cerberus makes a, a nice throwing bag now that a lot of guys can train indoors with. It's not exactly going to replicate the six-inch chain on these wobs, but uh, you certainly can get the movement down and that high release, that triple extension. Yeah, just the momentum thing. It's it's physics basically. Get the weight moving, then throw it over the bar. Another thing, I'd be I probably would wear a glove. I think they would allow gloves here if you wanted them. After as many times as these guys have thrown, calloused hands or not, that with that weight starting to feel like not good, ripping out of your. And honestly, maybe I'm being too harsh because these guys probably have thrown. 10 times a piece already or at least at least five that's a lot of that's a lot of throwing Oh, that's the, uh, I think the novice men's class. They're all mixed together, Nick. He didn't separate the novice men, which honestly wasn't a bad idea. I think it's been, been fairly competitive. Oh, that's good info, Joe. I haven't even looked at our podium right now, but a three-way tie for men's super heavyweight. That'll make this event very interesting, so I'll get definitely some notes on that before we get to that 56-pound weight over bar. Some of these guys are pretty spent by now, too. You know, I always have to second-guess my commentating. You know, it's, you know, it's not unlike a lot of these guys – that have been here before five events is a long day no matter but to a lot of these novice guys they've they've never competed in a full competition they're all pretty spent right now and, and getting this wob right now to work for them over 12 feet a lot of factors going against them nice throw really like that yeah he's a highland guy is he yeah i can tell What's his name? He looks like an Erdsman, doesn't he? Yeah, that's true. They're all bald. He's not. So I talked to Jen from Detroit Muscle a little while ago. Uh, I'm going to head out there for their show in October. I missed that. She's still getting me the date on it. That's the Motor City, what is it, the Motor City Mash or something? Yeah, so uh, Detroit Muscle's got a show in October they're going to do. Uh, this will be the second year for that show, so we're going to do some live streaming uh, there for them. That's a fun bunch down there. A lot of those uh, those guys and gals representing here today, and I believe they're out of Ips Ypsilanti. Is that right? Plymouth. Okay. Yep. Nice throw. Yeah, you high pointed that perfectly. <laughs> Let's 
Speaking of Highland Games, Highland Games season has taken off, so we might see a lot of these fellows on that circuit enter strongman competitions with some Highland Games shows. Uh, first show of the season is Alma, May 25th. Nice. Not an inch to spare. Uh, yeah, Al Alma Games, the island, uh, the Alma Celtic Festival, I think is what it is, and it's uh, 25th. I'm competing in that show myself. You show they got a pro division on Saturday on Sunday. Jameson's floating around somewhere to take the edge off. So. And you get to wear a kilt. Jeez, how can you beat that? To the shortest, though. Stay where he needs to put that weight through with a little more. Just, just not deep enough with that weight. When that weight's coming back between his legs, he's almost got to be reaching behind another five or six inches. Let that weight come through a bit further. Once you do that, he's going to pick momentum, put that weight. That momentum by itself will take that weight to a feet. So that's why I say all these guys would be there six weeks from now. Impressively, I think we're going to get several guys going over 15 feet. First with a 42 for the novice. Most of these guys would see a 56 in real competition. With 15 feet, I think uh, would be a, a really good throw for a lot of these guys. With the 42, uh, I know quite a few of them will probably get there today. Oh, I didn't. I, I guess you were not. I want. I'm going to come out to your show, Nick. And I was going to ask you if you wanted me to live stream, and I'll be out there to do it. It's actually the first year that um, I'll be able to make your show because I'm not on vacation. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, why not? I'd love to do it. Count me in. Yeah, Motor City Monsters, yes. I know a lot of guys really had a good time at that show last year. I wasn't able to make it, but another good show in our state that I missed earlier. Throw it on in the thumb, Motor City Monsters, uh, Battle on the Beach, Great Lakes Strongest Man, War of the North, Battle of Asgard, Raw Strength, anyhow, here in uh, Portage that we're at today. And then there's a second show in August. I'm not sure what the name of that is that Jeremy's throwing as well. So it's a full calendar event events uh, starting today. And July, the beach, the 13th, right, Nick? 13th, Battle of the Beach. Yeah. In August, of course, back here again. September, Great Lakes. October, Motor City. Man, that's what I like to see. That's a lot of great shows in Michigan, and we're back, baby. There was a time that Michigan had a bunch of shows and a bunch of strongmen. I think we're seeing those glory days revised again, in large part to the great promoters we have in the state of Michigan. And uh, it, it's you see it here with the novice class of 30 people deep that we have here at the first show of the year. And we're going to see another 60 or 70 up at Great Lakes. And... Every single year we see these novice classes growing, and that just opens up the door for these these uh, men's open classes to grow bigger, bigger, and bigger and produce great athletes and more pros out of our state uh, to get to the higher level as this sport grows throughout the United States and in the world, of course. And we here from Michigan will have more and more guys representing at that high level. And that's obviously a, a, a badge of honor. We love to see that.
Yeah, I'll announce it too. I, I'm actually getting back to podcasting here next week, and a long time coming. I thought I was back, and then uh, anyhow, story for another day over beers. But back finally in a good place, and life's good, and everything's good, and this is a great way to kick it off. And I can start helping you guys more on that end too with uh, the podcast again, and getting some fun interviews of a lot of the athletes we got going on, and you guys, the promoters, and lend a little more love to it, whatever that's worth. As much uh, visibility as we give the sport, the better we are are off. That's for sure. Was it at thirteen? So yeah, we're at thirteen now. I turned my back. They 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 raised it up. the The herd is thinning out. Thirteen's a pretty good throw at this point in the competition. Five and a half hours in. A little more difficult to muscle it over. Uh, that was there, actually. That high point was about 14. You just have to follow through with that hand, come over the head with it a little bit more, start kind of that backwards rotation in that weight. But his high point was there at 14 feet. There it is. Yep, all right, great. Good throw. This guy will just keep his hand in his pocket, step up like it's nothing. Let's see, this will be the tell-all, though. What's he going to throw today? Yeah. All right, 14. Yeah, side start. Yeah, just a little more momentum on that. I'm a one, two, three guy between the legs. Throw on the third. Just trying to get that maximum momentum. Reach back deep, pull hard through. Stop pulling once you get through. At that point, let the weight momentum take it up. Release at its high point, up on your toes. Yes, the toes do matter, especially when you're throwing in a big competition, it can come down to inches. I, I know we're raising at one foot increments right here. I'm sure at some point he'd probably go to a six inch increment. In Highland Games, you'll even see a one or two inch increment as they get higher and higher, especially for, well, for records anyhow. Yeah, there's your, well, yeah. So I did find out he's a Highland Games thrower, so to no surprise, he's hitting 15 feet. Just, just was up front of the bar. I think he's two to the side, two to the middle. Oh, okay. You can't argue a guy that's been at it. So he's trying to pick up all of his momentum from his side. Interesting. Can't fault him. He didn't make it, but and not because he lacks the power. I think we might have some really good entertainment with that 56 coming up. Got really a lot of momentum there on that weight. He just threw it behind him. Oh, boy, there it was, too. He definitely had the height there. Just a little bit in front of the bar. Let's see here how many guys we got throwing that 56 today. So we'll have the men's open middleweight. Men's heavyweight and men's super heavyweight all throw in the 56. How about 18, guys? Start the bar at 10 feet. I, I, I actually think that might even prove to be a challenge for a few of them that haven't thrown the 56 before.
So I think his, his bigger issue there when he's throwing, he's turning to watch the weight go over the bar. I have a feeling if he would have just kept himself straight, kind of looking out in front of him, releasing high and watching the weight up high. Uh, yeah, you might have seen a throw over the bar there. But he was turning as he was throwing to watch the weight go over. He lost a ton of momentum when he was doing that. Nice throw. Wow. I think that might be the best of the day right there. Nice throw. Well, you know what they say, cream rises to the top, and that certainly is true with some of these throwing events. Towards the end, these guys generally are the ones with the form. Really nice throw there. Muscle can only get you so far. Form and technique go a long ways. When it comes to Highland Games, I've been told that more than once. Talking to a guy that myself who's muscled it my first year in competition. Close. Alphonse Mueller, he's been around. We've seen him around. He's a Highland thrower, too, so where his hand placed, you can tell that's Highland guy. Yeah, no problem. Height does help in the WAB for sure, but uh, he's a good thrower nonetheless. Some records here. Oftentimes, guys will chase a little bit higher of a height, <laughs> and there's a little bit of uh, an anxiety factor that gets involved. It's almost as if they throw as a result. They're trying, again, to losing their form a little bit. I think that's an example of it. He had a good day, though. Really nice deadlift. I think he did really well in the pressing. You might get on Iron Podium and check in with that super heavyweight battle. I understand it's a three-way tie right now. So we're going to get to the bottom of that for you. Maybe some more information if we could, too, on a uh, nice throw. All right, so Iron Podium, let me read this out here. So, Masters men, uh, Matt Holland's in first right now. Looks uh, comfortably. I don't think he can be beat. Um, he's four points ahead in a five-man class. Well, less for some reason. He didn't have a good uh, showing here in the, the weight over bar. Uh, men's super heavyweight open. Uh, Jared Bellows, uh, Samuel Clapper, and Corey Loper tied for first place. So you want to talk about an interesting battle and weight over bar. Uh, all very powerful guys. Uh, I might give the advantage to Corey right now because he's got height. 
So he might be able to reach a bit higher than maybe some of the other guys. Uh, open men's heavyweight. Uh, nice battle there between uh, Ben uh, Shingen, uh, 17 and a half points, and Ross uh, Deegan Cobb, uh, 17 points. I believe they got first and second wrapped up respectively. Uh, in what order, we're not sure yet. Uh, Dale Keller, metal weight, open, 21 points. Bill Boyer, 17, next closest. Uh, Dale, comfortable lead there. And then uh, our biggest class, of course, which is novice men. Uh, Brent uh, Blakely, who we just saw, as a matter of fact. Brett, that is, Blakely, um, 93 and a half points, comfortably in the lead. We're finished over bar to keep that there for him as well. Jennifer uh, Hemingway, first place, uh, open women. Uh, Elizabeth Carpenter, uh, women's lightweight. Uh, novice women, Stacy Farneth. Uh, looks like comfortable lead there for her as well. So Iron Podium, uh, Battle of Asgard. You guys want to find out where everybody plays in all the Wolf events. We will uh, we'll find out how that super heavyweight class ends up here in just a minute. Feats of Raw Strength 3. That's right, Joe. Why change the name? It's worked. Joe, where are you going to be? You going to Feats of Raw Strength? I'm sure you'll support that again. Great Lakes again. What's the uh, outlook for you this season? Nice bro. Nice throw. Wow, these guys are really battling it out now. Uh, 14 feet, I believe. I thought 15 would be the mark. I think we're going to get a few guys there, maybe 16. Fifteen feet. A bunch of cookies sound good right now. That's right, Joe. You always got to defend your title. Can't take any time off. So we'll see you there at Feats of Raw Strength for sure. And I would imagine whether you're competing or not, you still might end up at the Great Lakes at least to. to uh, to watch it it's a hard show to want to miss that's for sure providing we can make it we'll be there Didn't let it go. It does not count. He's got to throw left. He's got to put everything into it. Oh, stay between your legs. Get a little deeper. Nice try. Nice try. I think we got uh, maybe guys left this class, and then we're going to move on. I think the 56 is going to be pretty quick. No technique on the 56 is going to be tough for a lot of guys. Just slipped out of his hands, went forward there. It happens. Yeah, big and strong at 56, boy, that's it's tough to muscle it over 12, honestly, without some form. All right, still good showing there. Oh, 
Well, he just got it over on 14. Of course, he's a thrower, so he might have just made a quick correction and let's see where he's at with it. He might be an Erzman. A lot of power. The guy's got a ton of power. <laughs> Figures out a little form on that. He'll be getting pretty high. All right, one down, uh, one, two, three, maybe five to go. You know, a lot of times you'll hit that 15 thrown at a 13. You hit a high height thrown at a 12. It's almost like the pressure's off. You're not overthinking your form. You're full, you're following through just right. And all of a sudden that bar gets a little bit higher and you start really, you just aren't tweaking everything the way you were when you were relaxed and throwing. Nice throw though. Wow, there you go. Very relaxed, nice throw. A perfect example. I mean, he's well, well cleared 14 last time. Just kind of overthrew it. And I'm, I imagine a little wear and tear right now. These guys are exhausted. It's been a long day. Over a five hour competition. Six hours, are we at six? Okay. I hit some pretty good height. I think that's just a little wear and tear right there. That's a tired guy. Alphonse Mueller. I'm going to say first throw over. And that'll be the first guy at 15, I believe. Yep, there we go. All right. Nice throw. All right, that's it. That was our 42 pound weight for 80% of the field. We have, I think about 16 or 18 guys throwing now between all of our open classes, including that big uh, three-way tie for our super heavyweight class. That's just one of the judges having a little fun. Where are they going to start him? I'd like to see him start at 10. All right, I'll give this just a break. I think they're going to let these guys maybe warm up for a second. It's been a long wait.
Mike's. All right, 56 pound weight. It's a big game changer. Uh, they're starting at, uh, it looks like eight feet. Maybe a little low. I'd have started at 10. I think you got to treat this the same way you do any event. There's a starting weight. You might zero it. I don't think you're guaranteed a throw for anybody. And maybe this isn't a guarantee either. 56. I don't know if that made it. Technically, no. Just high pointed in the wrong spot. He's in front of the bar. That 56 is a bear. There you go. Yeah, maybe eight feet's a good starting point. Really nice little throw there. I say little, that probably cleared about 10 or 11 feet. I don't know, 56, I'm gonna put a lot of these guys right around, uh, I think 12 feet, 13 feet will probably be your mark. I think we're gonna lose a lot of guys before 10. I think all these guys are more than capable of muscling at 210, regardless of form. There we go. Uh, front of the bar, make it over. <laughs> nope, did not in front of the bar. There he goes. Okay. All right, good throw. I had the height there, just uh, didn't get the hand release in the proper spot he high pointed in front of the bar nice throw First left-handed thrower today, it looks like. Not a bad idea to learn with both hands either. All right, we're gonna let these guys throw at nine and we'll get back to you in just a minute.
I don't like to make predictions early, but if Corey Loper is going to throw like that all day, nobody's going to beat that. Standing six foot five, is he? He's got a good form on this and a lot of power. Yeah, he's going 17 feet if he wants it. Be a little challenging for a lot of guys right now. I think we're at what, 12 feet? Oh, you cleared that by four, four feet, dude. Yeah, it was like a good four. Get a good four feet. I feel like they would have told you if you did. I think bars at 12 feet. Now we're we'll lose. Don't tell I would say probably about three quarters of this field at this point. All very capable. Some practice, but I think we'll see less successful throws. Yeah, it's definitely not a flat ground over there. Guys are trying to find their spacing. Matter of fact, if you stood in the middle of that, you're probably at like an extra three or four inches low. Close, close. Just held on to it too long. Yeah, I think a lot of these guys are pretty gassed out right now. He had a little slack in the chain there, if you noticed, and when he pulled through, it'll stick you every time. That's why sometimes you gotta let the weight speed up through momentum, you can't really force it to speed up. Wow, oh, really close. Yeah, he did. There it is. Nice. Jared's had a really good day here. I, I know this probably isn't his favorite event, but he's got a chance to second place at this point. I think Corey's got first wrapped up. Maybe not. Maybe he'll shock me. I, that was a pretty easy throw, and he had some distance over that bar. So,
Pretty important throw here. He's tied with Jared and, and tied with Corey. So second place is in the balance. First place, technically. All right, third place. We'll give him third. That was a hell of a day for him, though. I called him a master when the day started. and Well, if he is, he's a badass master. And if he's not, he's still a hell of an open guy. Sometimes being tall isn't fair at all. It's just, it, he was well over it. I just don't see him being beat, but. I think it was 13. Is it 12? 12 feet. Oh, foot and a half. Not 14 foot. I think he's good for 14 right now. Not even trying. That was a good throw. I might move a little further away from it next time. He's got, he actually has his height in him. A lot of power coming through, momentum, triple extend. A little slack in that chain when he was pulling it through. If that was a little tighter, I think maybe he would have got the inches he needed. All right, Jared Bellows here. Had a good throw last time. I think he's capable of 14 and 13. 14, I guess this would be. Or is it 13? Hell, I don't even know. 13, okay. Wow, wow. That is really muscling it. Uh, he's, he's not getting very deep with that weight at all. Short-armed it. He muscled it. But a uh, hell of a job. It sure, it came up with a lot of force. That's a fact. He high pointed behind the bar, even. Oh, well, Jared! If Jared just got he just was patient, came through a little bit deeper, and he high points that with a good extension. He's he's capable of 14. I know you wouldn't think so after that last throw because it barely made it across the bar, but boy, he had a lot of power behind it. And after this last throw by Corey, uh, we are going to call it a day. So I appreciate everybody that uh, watches the live stream, is watching it and we'll watch it follow the gym life podcast give it a like got a lot of content coming your way this summer making a comeback had a lot of fun it's great to get behind the mic again chat with everybody and uh got some great shows coming up a lot of fun content not just strong man lifting life and gym life in general and being functional and and having fun doing it all right, nice try. Good good day by Jared. He's a strong guy. Good presser, good puller. He's got all the intangibles. And he's 320 pounds. Unless by some weird reason he'd throw two bad throws. I don't see him not hitting this in the first try. Easy. Yeah, 14-15 all day long. Congratulations, Corey Loper. First place men's super heavyweight.
Thanks for everybody who joined me today, and uh, look forward to you at the next show. I guess it's going to be probably Battle on the Beach on Nick's show in July, unless there's something I'm missing in June. But otherwise, I'll see you all summer long at these live streams. Uh, four of them lined up for Michigan. We'll see what we're doing with George and the Great Lakes here soon. I think he's got ADL up there, and uh, perhaps I'll be a part of that. Uh, otherwise, I'll do something up there and uh, enjoy the show. So, so in the meantime, uh, I'll catch you guys back on the podcast. I'll be getting on. Uh, hey, there's a guy right there. Hey there, Cody. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys on my podcast uh, starting next week. Shows are coming up. <laughs>